Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'll call the Marion Township's Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for September 25th, 2021 to order. The time is now 9.02 a.m. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, for anyone who is interested, we do have hand sanitizer and masks at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board during public comments, please come up to the microphone and clearly state your name and address. If you have not already done so, please sign in to make sure your public comment is recorded properly. Um, at this time, I'll open the floor. I believe we have three people that had signed in. Uh, sir, I think you were, you were first, if you'd like to come up to the microphone. Hi, Caesar. Good morning. Uh, I'm Joe Gerard, a citizen and a new resident of the township. My wife and I talked about this topic yesterday, and my wife said, it's a township, not a county. Quit calling it a county, because that's confusing Marion Township and Berks County back and forth is in the interchange of that. I still don't understand. Sue explained to me once, but I think Joe, excuse me, would you mind coming to the microphone so oh, the Zoom yep. people can I, hear? I thought my too. voice was funny. Well, <laughs> it's kind of funky on the Zoom thing then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <thank you>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so explain to me what the, what the difference is between you two. I see on the agenda that you're going to talk about a topic I want to touch on, and that is what's going on out back. Um, whether it's going to happen or not is still up in the air. That is a huge meat processing plant and cold storage plant that's going on in former Zimmerman Farm. I realize I've heard a lot when talking with Walmart Thorpe and talking with our own internal HOA, and I'll probably hear it again here this morning. Oh, that's Snow Creek, or well, that's Lebanon County. It's Snow Creek, it's Lebanon County, but it's going to impact us. Us being Marion Township. Uh, we're going to have issues potentially with water runoff. It's going to be a piece of run the ground. We're going to have issues with noise pollution. We're going to have issues with traffic. The increased traffic load, everyone here will agree. That I think it's Main Street out here through Stoutsburg. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible road. Very, it's very much in need of repair and upgrade. If you go down past the, the Tuffle Hockey Creek Bridge and take the right turn on Sheridan, that road is pretty well torn up as well. And I've watched your prior meetings, mm -hmm. so I know that this is a topic you've always discussed. It's an issue of who owns it, is it state, is it township, is it county, what does it belong, where does the funding come from? I understand all that. But what you're going to have is you're going to have increased traffic, commuter traffic, not truck traffic. You'll have truck traffic coming down through um, 419 an hour. And I see Mr. Donahini just walking. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Um, but you'll have commuter traffic. If you look at the maps, I think. I think you guys have all received a copy of those. Mm -hmm. That's the information packet we received under the RTK. They show a lot of parking in the complex. We don't know if this is going to be an eight hour operation, 16 hour, or 24 hour. But you're going to have increased commuter traffic. And I think once, instead of going all the way around, they're going to discover the shortcut through here, up Sheridan Road, and take the left on the other side of the railroad over the past bridge and go right down to Newmanstown. You're gonna to see a lot of increased traffic there and the roads are only going to get worse. From everything I've learned, or that we've learned, there's been four or five of us that have dug in to try and find information on this. There's no money coming to the surrounding townships and boroughs. Walmersdorf is getting none, none is coming to Marion Township, but you're getting the wear and tear on the roads. The other issue you're going to have, I know it's a topic of interest to you, and have discussed it before, is people regard this road out here as a racetrack. Mm -hmm. It's a 25 mile zone to the end of town where it goes to 35. I deliberately drive 25 to 30 miles an hour when I come down through here. And I can't tell you the number of times I've been almost run off the road by people that are just such a hurry to get somewhere or who don't care. I know there's people coming out to get mail and people coming out to get into their cars right down along here. You're going to have that increased concern. Mm -hmm. 
uh, so you can have the noise. Uh, you might get some potential people that might try with medium sized trucks, you know, like box trucks or something like that, to come down through and think, oh, they can go up Sheridan Road until they get to the other end and discover they're not going to fit underneath the overpass. Not on, I mean, it's plenty high, probably, but it's far too narrow for anything bigger than, say, uh, a staple delivery truck or something like that. So you're going to have these kind of issues to deal with. And I think you need to take a long, hard look at what can be done about getting perhaps some of the funding or as a funding source to take care of your roadways, or simply say, hey, no cream and lemon, what are you doing for us to help us keep these roads up? We can't afford it. Somebody's going to need to take throwing some money in the pot for that. Uh, also, if you have children in the area, this is going to go, I don't know where the children, where do the children from here go to school? It's uh, generally the Conrad Weiser. The Conrad Weiser. 419 is going to be one of the major traffic routes for your traffic study. Mm -hmm. Conrad Weiser is within spinning distance of this complex. Mm -hmm. A diesel fuel spill can be very nasty indeed. Mm -hmm. rock is going to go right over that area. Children are there. Where's the safety? There's other studies that need to be done that haven't been started yet. The environmental studies, the water runoff studies, all of those other issues. We had a, a brief sidewalk meeting with the gentleman involved in standards and compliance and such like, such like that. And he mentioned there's a document called the MPC, which evidently describes how you get from a concept to a final delivered project, the steps you've got to take. There are many studies, not just the traffic study, but as a neighbor and as the keeper of the township, I'd like to ask that you please keep an eye on the studies that need to be done by that process. Are they being done? Um, there's a lot of questions that I'm not going to say in this environment because I have no proof, but there's just a lot that I don't think is being done. One, one thing to consider is uh, this is very early on in the process, very like much. very, very early on in the process. So one of the, the first things in that, that whole thing is to get the traffic study. That's right. one of the, the earliest things. As they start to progress and more objections come in, whether it's from Marion Township or Wolmelsdorf or even the residents of, of Mill Creek, um, all of that's going to come together and then they'll start doing some of the more involved things mm -hmm. as the earlier stage, like the environmental studies and everything else. So as that develops, absolutely, we'll be keeping our finger on the pulse of that very, very closely. But a lot of it is um, many weeks, months even out from, from coalescing. Yeah, exactly, from coalescing. So you absolutely, I know Jim has, we all have a vested interest in it, but Jim particularly has offered to take point on that. So as things start to, to move, albeit slowly, we'll be sure to have all the information and then we'll share it at public meetings and obviously if you want to do another right to know we'll be happy to share any anything and everything <laughs> yeah i've submitted the right to know no creek to get what you want to see mm -hmm. um Lebanon, the only thing Lebanon told me they had was the zoning hearing board notes which i already received from no creek Lebanon invited me back they said please feel free to call us every month or so to get an update they were very helpful and we were very welcomed in that office when we went in to talk to them about it. Um, and I intend to keep on top of that. I'm very aware that this is a long involved, but this is very early on. And now is the time to say, hey, no Creek, we're aware of this. Mm -hmm. Their traffic sighting survey said they were going to keep everybody in the, in the area mm -hmm. involved in the scenario. When we talked to the moment store, they only knew about the traffic survey that you folks are coordinating. Mm -hmm. They didn't know about all the rest of it or hadn't considered all the rest of it. So now they, they're aware of what's going on. And I think they're going to start becoming more peripherally involved as the project develops. And I say peripherally because it's going to be, I think it's going to come down to no Creek and Lebanon County saying, it's our project in our part of the world. Be quiet and go away. And with that, I'll be quiet and go away. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for your comment. Um, 
Jim or Irene, is there anything you want to add on top of what? Well, I'm a resident of Stonecroft too, no. so I'm very much concerned as you are. And uh, believe me, I'll be very vocal whenever the time comes. We have not even had a meeting yet, so it's pretty early in the process, obviously. We, we had a discussion at the uh, HOA meeting the other night. Yeah. I call it HOA, the Homeowners Association. Yeah. At the HOA meeting the other night, I talked about this topic for a while, and some of the <laughs> residents there asked if I would set up a separate meeting. Good. I'm currently in the planning stages of that. I've got a date. I've got the documents posted on our website. All I need to do is put together a blastogram community-wide note, and that will be sent out. And I'll meet with them to discuss any questions they may have. Again, I don't know a whole lot because there is not a whole lot available yeah. on the topic. Yeah, the, uh, the traffic study hasn't even started yet. So as soon as I hear anything, I'll be sure to let you and Jim. And Please, we can hear you. Okay. We'd like to attend the meeting as flies on the wall when you get together to discuss that. I'm aware it's not started. We're aware it's not really begun yet. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody on Zoom? No, there's nobody on Zoom. Might be batteries. I'll share with you. Is there anyone on Zoom? No, there's nobody on Zoom. No Zoomers. If you need batteries. Maybe. We'll, we'll make do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's working. It's working. That's just the, um, I think one of them, hers, the batteries got too low and it just turned off. So I'm just going to commandeer that one. Um, we have a couple other public comments. I believe Don, you have them? Here, I'll. Good morning. I'm, my name is Don Height. I'm a president of the Marion Township Community Association. I'm here to ask for permission to have a car show next year, May 14th. I think the only thing that would be a concerning aspect for me is if we're still dealing with COVID. I know case numbers are starting to go back up again. And as much as I love the car show, I would be happy to do that and help in any way that we can. I don't want to turn Main Street or like you had texted me about the ball field. I was going to talk about that this morning towards towards the end. But uh, the concern would be turning an area into a petri dish if we have a lot of people packed together. Um, Jim, Irene, what are your thoughts on that? Um, my understanding is that things are actually getting better. Okay, good. So um, just understanding some recent studies that are done, the projections for the spring are actually kind of good. Okay. As long as people get vaccinated and wear masks. Um, but of course, we can't predict what a virus is going to do. So there's also the risk that there could be another mutation and um, even more severe illness, and more deaths, et cetera. So, but for right now, my understanding is things are actually looking better come springtime. Okay, so, so is we May definitely 14th. want to have a car show if we can yeah. have one. That's yeah, sure. yeah, we yeah. Missed I mean, that I, car I, show this year. Right. I think I think it's a cautious watch and wait. Um, and uh, I, I don't have any objections if things are still on. You know, numbers are still going down. Right now, we're in the middle of of a surge. Okay. Yeah. So my 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 question is why I brought it up now is because we do have to get flyers out yeah. for the fall car shows that are yeah. being held in this area. Yeah. And we want to get the um, posters out the and information. So as People you... do have one car show. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, just asking for your permission before we go to do it someplace else. And so what, I, what I'd like to ask is, I know there's, there's certain seasons for car shows. Are you and the community association kind of married to May 14th or would you be opposed to maybe shifting it out more towards the fall? That would give it extra buffer in case there is something that is. As of this date, we have picked May 14th. Um, Mary Kepley has more or less spearheaded this, the, the car show. And she, uh, May 14th was the day we had it on our first car show. Mm -hmm. And I guess from pretty much slotted in by everybody else. We have been uh, in contact with Richland. They're talking about uh, their legion hasn't had their car show for two years, and they usually have a car show in the spring. Wilmersdorf has a car show in the spring. Uh, Rarensburg has a car show in the spring. Uh, Stroudsburg had a car show in the spring. So to, on us for to get into the area of car shows, that's the date we had picked. 
So I, I don't object to it really, honestly. No. I like the car show. I they try not to compete show. with each other. I understand right. that. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got so many going on. That, you know, you've got to pick your date way yeah. ahead of time right. so that nobody else is doing the same is, thing. Is there anything that you could do from a crowd control standpoint to help maybe no. alleviate risk? Not, not, I mean, you can't control people. Well, I know you can't control <laughs> yeah. people, but I'm just saying, yeah. is, is there maybe things that we can do? Because I know we had a pretty good setup the first year, but is there maybe something uh, in terms of like a, maybe a divider, trying to keep people moving one direction or the other on the street, rather than just, it was, it was it work, but it was just kind of a mass of people milling around. Yeah, not My really. My concern is we had a real good turnout the first year. If yeah. we have anywhere near or similar to that, you're going to have a lot of people very close to each other at pretty much every, every inch and every time of the, the car show. Um, well, if it's really bad, obviously anybody who's at risk won't come. Oh, no, that's not true. That's uh, yeah, I that's think not if, true. If I, yeah. Yeah, if I was worried about it, I just wouldn't right. Yeah. 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 Right. There were other car shows right. that I went to that there were people there with masks. Right. Yeah. No one said anything. Yeah. Right, right. So and if you did have a mask on, you right. weren't chased out. Yeah. Right. It's your, it's your preference. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any problems yeah, at, with it, you know, point, unless, unless there's something that is so dramatic that there's this huge surge, that there's a huge change in the way the virus is behaving and the death rate goes up, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we all have to pay attention to what the science tells us. So, I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, my principal so, concern is like, uh, I think the, the board is kind of right. leaning towards authorizing it. I don't want to see you and the community association spend a lot of time and money on advertising on things only to have it be like, oh, well, we're, we're back into the throes of like everybody's getting us again. So you have to react to what's there. I just would prefer to try to err cautiously if we can. So um, you guys don't waste, because I know advertising is not cheap. Advertising is probably, I think, one of the biggest, if I remember when we looked at that the first year, that's like the biggest expense. For doing the car show was, was and it's like we tried to print out print our own flyer well, yeah, which, we, which keep, we did we, we, in like we tried to do everything we, on our own yeah but there's still there's still a lot of cost there which i don't want to see you guys do and then have it not actually come to fruition. it was one of our bigger fundraisers that we ever oh, had most assuredly most assuredly, and yeah. uh, there's things in in the works that people are planning to be here uh, already so if we got just turned Turn things down, we will. Okay. So I, I'll make a motion to approve permission for the MTC at a host of car show May 14th, 2022. Second. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, hey, wait. Yep. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Sorry, I forgot about that. Sorry. Right. <laughs> um, Kelly, would you have a comment? You signed, you signed it on the phone. Yeah. Okay. Kelly Fox, 541 Richland Road. Um, my first question that I have for you is line painting. So you're finished with the rows that you're doing. Um, when is line painting? I have to set the date with A1 line painting. So that's that's a that's a me takeaway. I gotta set that date with them. And when are you planning on doing that? As soon as they can get us in. I, you mean for them doing line painting? When are you contacting them? I'm, I tried to do it this past week. But I was pretty much solid at work from about five thirty in the morning until late at night, so I just didn't get a chance to do it. <clears throat> so I will make it a concerted effort of trying to call them this week. I have a little bit of time off towards the beginning of the week and try to set a date with them to go out and do it. Okay, thank you. So I'm hoping Thursday. Hopefully Thursday, I'll have some. I'll have some good news okay. in terms of actual date. Because winter's winter's coming rapidly approaching. Yes. Yes. Okay, and then my other question is. The website, if MTCA, if we have things that we want on the website, mm -hmm. do we give them to Susie? How do we get them on? Call me. Um, I'm actually dealing with something with the, the website hosting company right now. There's a strange issue with one of the databases where, like, I, I don't know if it does it to everybody else, but when you go on the site, there's some, like, red text at the top. Okay. Um, they're fixing that, but that's a direct result of something with the user accounts where something's not set right it's not something that i can just go in and fix i have their their support working on it but once that's fixed we'll be able to actually give like you or don or whoever uh specific 
user account rights to be able to go in and update a Marion Township Community Association. Okay, page. and how long will it take for that to get fixed? Because we're hoping by our October meeting. Talk, talk to me. I'll put it. Anything you need okay. to get up urgently, I can do yeah. for you. Because we want that on by yeah. the October meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Talk, talk to me. Like, give me a call, send me an email. I'll work with you on getting that put up. But uh, I, I unfortunately don't know how long it's going to take to fix it. It could be something easy or it could be like. So until know, they fix that, we can't, you can't. Add I can't anymore. create the user accounts. Because I was actually trying to create one for like Jim and Irene, because Sue has one, I have I don't one. have one. You, you do, you just haven't signed into it. I don't know what it is. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's what I said about the last meeting. Yeah. I just, I can't do it for you. So one of these times when we're together, I just have to go through the, okay. the process of okay. doing that with you. But when I tried to do that, I ran into like a wall of, of red text of like, you can't do this. And I'm, I'm a full okay. administrator on the site, so I absolutely should be able okay. to do it. So once we get that sorted out, we'll be able to do that for you guys or the fire department or anybody else that wants to start actively collaborating. Because the goal here is to give, uh, essentially teach you to fish. Uh, you shouldn't have to funnel everything through okay. us or one person specifically. So that if you want to go and put something on your calendar, that's like, hey, we're doing a bake sale or a car show or whatever, you can do that. Or if you're barbecue chicken sale or for having a meeting tonight, you'll be able to do that. That's the, that's the end goal. Okay. So, in the meantime, if we get information to you about the car show, you can I put can, that on. I absolutely now. put that. Yeah. Okay. And then my other issue was the number one thing that goes on here is the speeding in town. Yep. Um. So we have that sign. Yes. Can we put that like near a speed limit sign and be using this is your speed? Um, yes. There so, are you know other states that use those constantly. Yep. Yeah, I need to I need to look at it. I think that there was a problem with the battery. Again, I just haven't had time to sit down and, and dig at it, but I, okay. I'm all for putting the sign back out there. We just okay. haven't. Um, one of the other things that is on the agenda that we're going to talk about is the speeding on Main Street. There's a couple of things that we have in the works to do. Um, we have started the traffic study and like the warrant study around stop signs, okay. one, three stop signs on Main Street to see which one of them actually would fit. Um, one of the things that's going to be done during the line painting is they're going to paint the outside lane lines yeah. to help visually narrow that crosswalks as well. Um, I'm looking nowhere that I've been able to find, and I'll actually I'll cover most of this now, so we don't have to do it later in the agenda. Um, trying to find a place that rents the piece of equipment that does the rumble strips, be able to cut in rumble strips, so that when you're exiting 422, you have a line for rumble strips, which will help hopefully encourage people to slow down as they're exiting the highway. God knows whatever they're doing on the highway. Um, along with a couple of uh, other signs like intersection ahead uh, that require minimal minimal work in terms of an ordinance. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw the email, but I asked MSI for quotes about those like pedestrian crossing things that go mm -hmm. in the middle of the road. They're a little on the pricing side, but I think it would be worthwhile to get yes. like two or three of them. They're about between $200 and $300 a piece, but they're really heavy uh, plastic and a big heavy rubber base so that they're, they're less likely to get run over and break or walk away on their own. Um, but uh, there's a number of things that we're trying to do because it's, it's not quite as simple as like, yes, there's speeding, we should do something about it. But my thing is we already own this piece of equipment. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no I, I agree with you. And speaking okay. honestly, I just haven't had time to sit down and, with it and, and figure it out. And maybe somebody else can figure it out if it's just the battery that needs to be changed. My, right. my fear is it's not just the battery. I know Peter Walls occasionally fought with this. My concern okay. is that there's something in the charging circuit that is preventing okay. The battery may be fine. The battery's kind of old and they need to be replaced. But okay. my concern is that it's, it's like your alternator on your car. The, okay. the power coming out of the solar panel isn't either reaching the battery at all or isn't reaching the battery enough which is going to be, a, diagnostically speaking, a lot harder to, to look at. And then it may require replacement parts or it may require us to take it somewhere to get serviced. So it's, again. So it's more than just putting it it's, it's, it's more than popping the battery in, is, okay. is the point. Um, but I'm all for putting it back out there. I, I actually, honestly, rather than having it in the garage, once it work, it's working, just park it on Main Street. And if we have to move it somewhere else, we move it somewhere else. Otherwise, that's just where it lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Are the crosswalk scheduled with the line paint? It is. Awesome. Good, yeah. good, good. And certainly back to line painting, <clears throat> what roads, how many miles, what are we painting? I'd, I'd have to look it up because it's been a bit since I, yeah. I drew that up, but it's the roads that we just did the paving on and the it's Main Street from the Triangle up to past the other Triangle. The triangle is my concern. Yeah. Because 
that is so nasty. Yeah, that's, and that's specifically, there. there were a couple of other little spots that I had identified for like, when you're going around a turn, the center lines are just okay. basically completely gone. But the big focus was along Main Street and the, the other sections that we just did the Blue Island on. Okay. Thank you. No, no thank you. Moving into the main items for discussion. Uh, item number one is the 904 performance recycling grant. Uh, we have been notified by the DEP that our recycling grant has been approved. Uh, it is a total of $4,159.22. This is thanks largely to Dutch Valley Food Distributors for their recycling of a very large amount of cardboard and other, other light recyclables. It was... Um... Three hundred and fifty-three thousand two hundred and seventy-eight pounds of cardboard. That is a lot of cardboard. That's a lot, lot of, of cardboard. That's like double their amount from the year before. Wow. Good. Because normally we get around two thousand dollars. <throat> okay. Next is the twenty twenty-one Volunteer Fire Relief Association. Uh, the funds totaling $11,432.63 will be directly deposited by the state. Act 205 requires us to deposit these funds to the Marion Township Fire Company Relief Association within 60 days of our receipt, and we must complete Form 706B, uh, just like we did in, in yep. prior years. That, that one's actually not too bad in terms of no, forms. No, everything's online now. Yeah. Yeah. Can you schedule a meeting with, with the fire the fire company? So Mervin, would we would we talk to you about scheduling or trying to get a, a a meeting together between the board of supervisors and the fire company, or would that be better served with somebody else? Now let me remind you, if the three of you are together, we have to advertise it. I know. To advertise yeah. it. Sure. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, just the inroad of who do we need to talk to mm -hmm. specifically? Sure. So if you if you can let us know, we'd like to either yeah. set something up or maybe try and coincide that with a board meeting. Next yeah. month's board meeting is probably going to be one that we want to avoid. Just speaking honestly, maybe a workshop meeting might be better simply because of the budget. Yep, I know so. John's interested in not having a meeting. Not problems, yeah, too. I just want to opportunity to talk oh, yeah. about well, what you're doing and meet everybody and ideally moving forward it might not be a bad idea to like quarterly have yeah. something on the agenda where we can talk to you guys and make <clears> sure that <throat> there's there's nothing that needs to be filled out from a form standpoint or there's nothing that you guys need help with or really just try to build a better dialogue between the board and, and fire company and that's my concern if you need help we're here for you but yeah we don't know who to even talk to at least i don't you may be here, but I don't. So, yeah we'd like to we do that fire meeting. I'd like first, to see it happen. First Monday of the month, which is really just the uh, uh, next, uh, next month, not the coming one, but the next Monday. And I, I would imagine with our people there, that'd be about the best time if you could come to the fire company mm -hmm. to our meeting. Discuss a little bit of a uh, the what we got with each other. That's something you and John could do. So that's open to the public, correct? Yeah. yeah. First yeah. Monday of the month? So yeah. it's, and, it's and what time? Uh, you're supposed to be a member, of course. Okay. Uh, but I think the supervisor would be eligible to do that. Okay. What, what time is that? 7.30. Okay. So okay. So if all of us go, and so what I'm thinking would be when best. When you go, you don't have to advertise it. Right? Yeah. If you so, uh, well, two, two is, quorum, yeah, so two's technically, I, two's technically quorum. So the reason I ask Irene is I know yeah, John, John being the EMC. Well, I don't want anyone coming back and say you had a meeting and yeah. you know, I'm no. working, I'm working that month. Okay. But so maybe like Jim, John, Jim and John? Yeah. Like, would you be free, Jim? Okay. Yeah. So as long as only one of the board is going and like John being the EMC, not a, an elected Sorry. official is perfectly fine. We don't have to advertise, but that might be the, the best quickest inroad to, Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Just Phenomenal. Kind of questions ready for or whatever. And that's at seven. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. I'll see if he's available. Okay. Excellent. Next item on the agenda is trick or treat night. Uh, we need to set the the date and time, and then we need to advertise this. Last year we set this for October thirty first between six and eight p.m. and authorized advertising in the community calendar of the Reading Eagle and the Myer Myerstown Merchandiser. Uh, Womelsdorf's night has been set for October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. I don't see any reason to, to differ from that. I like having trick or treat night on, actually on Halloween. So that's uh, a Sunday. Sunday. Okay. 
I'll make a motion to set the trick or treat time for 2021 for October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. And advertise. Thank you, sir. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is election day. This is Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. The building will need to be opened for poll workers to arrive by 6 a.m. The township office will be closed that day. The electronic equipment over in the corner uh, will be removed prior to that date. That way they don't have to worry about bumping that or breaking that or anything else. Um, the real question is, are we, what are we going to do about opening the building? Are we going to do the same thing as we did prior, prior I years? I mean, I have off. I don't mind getting up early. I'm not doing anything that day special. So I don't mind getting up early. Okay. And then I can uh, stay here till voting because <laughs> <laughs> they only open at seven. Yeah. But um, I don't mind doing that. Well, they're, they're in here by six. You wouldn't have to stay. Well, that's what I mean. I'm yeah. Gonna stay. I don't have to come back. I mean, we could also, if we just turn the alarm off early, we could give them a key to get in the front door. And then get the key back at the end of the day. Uh, I mean, do you want the alarm off overnight? No, no, no. I mean, like if you came in well, that's early, what I do. I yeah, came in at five thirty. Yeah, because yeah. then you could just lock the door up and leave, and they just it would be a real and thin Sharon, window of time. Sharon was judge of elections, so she'd come in for a key. I don't know. If she's still. I guess she's still judge of elections. I don't know. Yeah, um, I mean that. Would... She didn't want to do it anymore. She didn't like technically resign, but mm -hmm. um, I think her term was up or something like that. Okay. Um, and I don't think anybody's on the ballot for judge election. Hmm. Um, but anyway. Yeah, let's let's talk to them. Touch base with her, yeah. see what's happening. But if, if you're willing to open up the building, yeah. that would be good. And then if need be, either you or I, I can I can always come by late come and, and close it up. Because they oh, usually, yeah. Yeah. I mean, with the- They're usually out of here after nine o'clock. It take quite as long, I don't think. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But, I, I think last year was like 9 p.m., yeah, so. Yeah. What? Okay. Should we just write you in? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything with elections. Oh, we God. already checked that out yeah. the other year because they were <laughs> short some people. And I called the uh, Board of Elections, the county, and yeah. they said, because I'm an employee, that's a conflict yeah, of interest. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately. Because I thought it would be fun for me to do. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's a long day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, next item on the agenda is the free shredding event. Uh, there is an event being held at the uh, Fleetwood Community, or excuse me, um, the Fleetwood High School. It is being sponsored by represent, Representative Barry Joswiak and the Fleetwood Community Bank. This is going to be on Saturday, October 16th from 9 a.m. to noon. There's a limit of four boxes per vehicle and there is more information available at the, the office at 610-378-4407. And I believe we also have some flyers that uh, we can, can make, we can make more copies of that. But there's this we just got after I had the agenda made up. Um, it's it's a free shred shredding event that the county is holding. Hmm. Household hazardous waste October 23rd at the Ag Center 8 to 2. All residents must pre-register. Um, and then a paper shredding event, October 16th at the Ag Center, eight to two. You must pre-register. Remind me, I'll put both of those on the website calendar. Thank you. Okay. Next up is the Berks County Association of Township Officials 2021 convention. This is held for supervisors, secretary, treasurer, tax collector, and elected auditors. This is on Thursday, October 21st, 2021 from 5 p.m. to 9.30 at the Oli Fair Center. Reservations must be made by October or excuse me, October 1st. There is no charge. A motion is needed to authorize who can attend. Um, I don't have any objection to anybody going, especially because it's no cost. So I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize uh, any interested supervisor, secretary, treasurer, tax collector, uh, tax collector or elected auditor to attend the Berks County Association of Township Officials 2021 convention. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Harold, do you want to go? All right. It's 5.30. 5.30. So actually, excuse me, it's 5 p.m. to 9.30. So if you showed up at 5.30, you'd, you'd be, yeah, 5 to 9.
Okay. Next up on the agenda is the statewide tax recovery exemption request. Uh, this is for the 2010 per capita tax for Sean McCoy, who is deceased. Um, in prior times where this has happened, we've, we've always granted it, so I'm inclined to do likewise here. I'll make a motion to grant the request uh, for exemption for Sean McCoy for the 2010 per capita tax. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the PSATS Unemployment Compensation Group Trust. Uh, we have to elect the tr trustees for this. Uh, this is like in prior years, there's uh, two people and you have to pick two. So it's a, it's large layer of formality. So I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, endorse the, the two available candidates for the PSATS Unemployment Compensation Group Trust. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Much like the um, unemployment compensation, there's also the PSATS Municipal Pension Trust. Again, uh, two candidates, you have to select two. So I'll make a, a motion to endorse the, the two candidates for the PSATS Municipal Pension Trust. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next on the agenda is the PSATS Health Insurance Cooperative Trust, much like the prior two. I'll make a motion to endorse the two candidates for that uh, PSATS Health Insurance Cooperative Trust for 2021. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Department of EMS, uh, the statement of costs for 2022. Um, it's $21,546.10, which is a 6.5% increase for police, fire, and EMS dispatching services. Uh, if we authorize the new agreement, um, which is actually the next item on the agenda, uh, the cost would be, um, actually, it, Sue, is this backwards on here? Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Okay. I looked at it three times. Okay, because that just seems, yeah. that I was wrestling with that earlier. It just seems backwards. No, wait, is it? Yeah, because yeah. it's 6.5% of 20,231 would be the no, 21. This, this letter is saying if you don't sign the agreement, your cost is. $21,546.10. If you sign the agreement, your cost is. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that, that makes more yeah. sense now. Okay. So let me, let me rephrase what I just said. So we want to sign the next thing because, <laughs> because it's a 6.5% difference. So if, if we did, if we took no action, it would be $21,546.10. If we endorse the agreement, which we have in, in previous times, they would be twenty thousand two hundred and thirty-one dollars and zero cent or seven cents. Um, so I'm going to segue into the next agenda item, which is the the actual dispatch service agreement. We've been paying for police, fire, EMS dispatch fees and stuff to the county annually. Um, it is subject to an annual increase without limitation uh, and decided solely at the discretion of the Berks County Commissioners. They have decided to fix the annual amount or the annual fee subject to increases based on the inflation index. They require us to adopt a resolution to execute the new agreement prior uh, to provide dispatch services prior to 12-31-21. Now, um, I had just um, asked Courtney to look over this just to make sure. Yeah. Thank you. But I think Andy said it kind of was okay. Yeah, I remember. And like, then there's a resolution too. Yeah, let's we'll say we'll have to do, for just for general meeting etiquette, we'll do resolutions and larger things on Thursday nights, mm -hmm. but from prior emails back and forth with Andy and Andy at the other meeting, it, it's it's very standard. It's it's so it's basically it's cookie cutter. Answers. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't have any objections to that. It's obviously a service that we need. And yeah. they great thankfully it's not been hiked annually, even though they had no restrictions on doing it. So and it's for um, fire fire police EMS. and EMS. Yeah. 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 So we obviously want to be able to get police out here. We obviously want to get EMS out here. We obviously want the fire company to get the call when somebody asks for help. So definitely a needed thing. I think we're barring any objections that we may have between now and Thursday. If any, that'll just be a resolution that we adopt at that point. I have no objections. 
ridiculous for the number of households we have. It's it's, it's expensive, but yeah. it's it's actually per capita, it's relatively uniform between like us and Wolmelsdorf and everywhere else. It is a very expensive thing. And there was actually concern of it going up drastically high because that's even subsidized Didn't heavily. It somewhere it's based on our census and the road mileage or something? It, or it's a combination. I can't remember if it's yeah. road mileage, but census census has a, a hand in it. But I do know that there was talk about the funding for that drying up and it being like a, a, an astronomical increase. Like that that 20,000 is a lot, don't get me wrong, but it would be like four or five times that much if we lost the, the subsidies at like the, the state and county levels. So okay. next item on the agenda is the emergency management coordinator equipment. Uh, John got his radio, uh, but it does not have a holder or strap. Um, he would like to request uh, that we authorize to purchase these things. Uh, we have a copy of the 911 uh, rapid response estimate. Let me scroll through to find that because I looked at it earlier, but I want to quote the actual number. Saying, I think he found something for like nineteen dollars and ninety five cents. He did. He yeah. Told, I yeah. forget what he said. It was like forty yeah. or fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember it being small change, but I wanted yeah. to actually get the number. So, the quote from nine eleven rapid response is a total of sixty three dollars and ninety eight cents. If John's able to get it for less than that, I'm okay yeah. with authorizing the expense up up to sixty five dollars. That way, if he can get it for less, that's even better. Yeah, I thought it was a lot less than that. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. the radio holder is 19, oh. but then there's the other stuff that goes along with it, like okay. the reflective the reflective ribbon and the, the strap and all that. The stuff that goes along with the holder yeah. is, the, is the expensive part. Mm -hmm. So if if he can get it for less, awesome. Yeah. Otherwise, like I said, I'm, I'm okay yeah. with spending $65. This is something we should have had for years anyway, yeah. and it just kind of slipped through. Are you motioning? Uh, I will be in just okay, a second. Sorry. No, no, thank, thank you for the reminder, but I uh, just hadn't gotten that for yet. Okay. So I'll authorize, or I'd like to make a motion to authorize the expense for John Seleski of up to $65 for the emergency management radio uh, holder, strap, and any other uh, accessories required. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Upstein. Jim. Hi. I do have some <clears throat> info from John. Would you prefer me to wait till the end let's, of the meeting? Yeah, let's do it towards okay. the end. Or uh, if this is related to the like space required for like emergency response. No, okay. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. So let's, let's save that for comment. <laughs> sure. Um, because I think some of that may fall into like the building maintenance, the discussion around like, oh, there's a lot. Yeah. Of stuff, oh, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Um, Next up is the Berks County Municipal Officials Breakfast. This is co-hosted by the County Commissioners and the Berks Municipal Partnership of CELG. This is on Friday, October 29th, 2021 at the Onalani Grange from 8 to 10 a.m. Breakfast will be followed by a brief set of commissioners' remarks. RSVP is required no later than October 15th. Um, I don't know if there's really any restrictions on who can or can't attend, but... I believe it's. I think it's. I think it's supervisors. Mm -hmm. uh, in prior years, there was a thing where road crew could go to that, but I don't know if that was venue yeah, specific. I don't think it's this one. Yeah. Um, so keep so that I on. I just need to know soon if any of you want to go. I'll have to look. Chances are, I will probably have to work that right, that yeah, particular day. Fine. But yeah, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Anything that's indoors. Mm -mm. So Irene, no. Yeah. Peter. Probably not. Realistically, I'll I'll check, but. It's not likely. Okay. Friday morning. Yeah, it's a Friday. Just let me know soon, okay? Yeah, you've got you've got like two and a half weeks, three weeks ish. Okay. Next is the declaration of disaster emergency. This needs to be signed off for the situation with Hurricane Ida that we have. Uh, Sue, I know you have that in your folder. I will sign that before I leave. And I believe the three of us actually yeah, should. Three yeah. Days, so, so yeah, pass days. pass that my way. I saw the email about it, but I wanted to wait until we had. And I just changed board. like the highlighted things to Marion Township. Yeah. Kind of made it make sense. Yeah, that's all. That's all you had to do. Okay. That's all I did when we had the like the winter yeah, storm. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Do you need to motion to someone that? 
we'll do it just to be safe. Yeah. But because I know the way this works normally is you can declare outside of a board meeting. Yeah. Um, you can wait. You don't have to. Um, but just to be safe, I know in the past we've always motioned, even if it's not necessarily required, just to make sure. So I'll make a motion to endorse the declaration of disaster emergency uh, for Hurricane Ida. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Does John need a copy of that? No. Do, uh, well, I think he does. Yeah, I was gonna say just to be safe, make just, make two yeah, copies. Yeah, I'll just send everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'll start a file for them in here too. Okay. So. Okay. Next item is the Stonecroft infield. Uh, this basin was made deeper previously and is currently not draining. Our engineer did not approve the plan to do so. BCCD did. Uh, Stone Group, the developer, needs to resolve this issue before they will be able to close out the the project in full or receive any uh, further allotments of any of the bonds or letters of credit that they may have. Um, I put a line out to McCarthy Engineering. I believe you guys were both on that email. Uh, Stonecroft doesn't have any firm plans, but they're looking at potentially Q1 or spring, Q, early Q2 of 2022 to start doing some of those things and look at remediation for the curbs. Um, and then potentially, depending on how that time frame works, the, the final paving, which would require the, the load testing, the rolling of the, the, the loaded triaxle truck to make sure that there's not any um, underlying uh, weaknesses, deficiencies, or uh, structural problems in the road base that would require uh, cutouts and repaving. So no real tangible news at this time, but it is something that they're aware of and we are going to continue pushing on them to, to get fixed. About the sinkhole? I heard that they sent somebody, uh, they being Landmark, sent somebody out, looked at it. They sent somebody out who didn't have a flashlight, so they were able to like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so they looked at it and they're like, "Yeah, that's a hole." Um, so they have to send somebody back out again to to actually take some measurements and, and do a little more in depth to try to figure out how bad it actually is. It's outside of the the roadway. It's not something that like our road crew can do because it's not even our roadway to begin with. But it's it's, uh, it's a situation that is now well documented on our part and is something that we're going to keep pushing on them so that they don't just like fill the hole and then have the sinkhole large well, and large and or well my yeah my concern I mean, is my concern <laughs> is like sinkholes if you don't do them right i'm not like an engineer or anything like that but if you just fill it back in with dirt they're usually the result of an underlying element whether right. there's a stream like an underground stream or something that's causing the the underground erosion <laughs> if you just fill it back in it's going to happen again or or worse you'll have the sinkhole shift mm -hmm. and it'll either go under the sidewalk mm -hmm. or it'll go under the street and you'll have somebody's car fall in so it's something that, again, McCarthy Engineering is acutely aware of, and we're going to be keeping a very close eye on it so that they don't try to fix it with caulk. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, method of fixing yep. Next is Just the it. culvert on Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. Uh, McCarthy Engineering provided a cost estimate of $91,539.37 to replace this culvert. This is largely using our road crew to do the majority of the work. Uh, we are at this point just waiting for GP11 permits on this project. Um, once we have those permits, then we can coordinate with uh, Butch and Kevin and the rest of the road crew to go out and actually start doing the work in earnest. Do you think we're going to get these permits before winter gets here? I, I really hope so. So permitting, and this is this is one of the reasons that we we tried to get these things authorized earlier, as as quick as as quick as we could early in the year, is the wheels of a lot of the other municipal agencies spin very very, very slowly. Um, and this is something that I've had a lot of back and forth emails with Jim McCarthy about is just trying to make sure that we're not, we're not missing anything. It's not like they sent something back waiting for a signature or a piece of information. No, it's just, you, you it's like the DMV, you get in line and you have to wait. Um, no, unfortunately it's, yeah, it's, if we could, believe me, we would. Um, because the the project, it's a big, relatively big price tag, but it's not all that complicated in the grand scheme of things. We send the guys out with so a backhoe and some other equipment we cut it out most of the stuff is precast so if it's a small enough piece we can load it in otherwise we just get somebody who's a crane operator like we did with um so i always remember, screw up the name is it rich it was richland road down there with the the head wall that they had to drop in we just get somebody to come in the the stuff's delivered they lower it in with the crane and then we backfill and then right. pave over it's, it's it's the timing the timing is the thing that is really the critical element 
Um, we actually, we have three culverts that we're looking to do, and all three of them are in kind of that same state. The, the first one, we got the GP11 permitting in, in I want to say, March or April-ish. It was beginning of the year towards the spring. We're still waiting on that one. The other two we've gotten in within the past couple of months, and they're also now just waiting for permitting. Um, so again, we'll keep on top of it as much as we can, but there's, there's only so much pressure we can exert on some of the other, especially the state agencies. Right. And from what I understand from all the phone calls I've been making, everyone is behind on work and getting work done is, is, is constantly delayed. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with us. It has to, it's just, it's the bigger picture. Yeah. And, and it's not just yeah. road stuff. I know like, like at everything. work, like electricians, like if you need to, even if something as simple as like, I need you to replace an outlet, they're like six to eight weeks out on, on that sort of stuff. It's everybody is backlogged because people didn't do anything during COVID, even though we're, we're still having problems with COVID. But uh, after a lot of the restrictions lifted, everybody just, everybody took off and said like, oh, I want to get this done. I need to get this done. We didn't do this. We didn't do that. So there's a huge amount of work, not enough people to go around to do it. And even in the best of times, as we found out with some of the, the building stuff, even when there's not a shortage of labor, I'll say, it's still sometimes very hard to get people to, to get lined up. And it's certainly hard in, in a governmental sense sometimes to get permits through. Even simple things sometimes take months and months and months and months. So we'll, we'll keep at it. You have our, our word there, but it's, it's something that as soon as we have it in hand, then we can, we can turn the guys loose and, and get them to work on it. Yes. So canal, we, we got the project designed. We requested uh, a grant from BCCD. We didn't, we didn't get the grant. Um, this is something I was talking to Sue this morning about when they put together the package that they were willing to potentially fund, assuming the grant, it was astronomically high. Like that, that little stripe of road there, like we had figured, I think it was like $65,000, $70,000 to do that. Um, the BCCD package with everything that went along with it was like in excess of $200,000 for the, for the project. And the reason that and this was before Jim or Irene was on the board, uh, Peter, myself, and Franklin all kind of turned our nose to it is one of the other things that they required was uh, like a 15 foot on either side riparian buffer. Oh, that's right which would have taken a huge chunk of your land out from under you, which we were like, no, we'll figure out another way to do it. So what I've been looking at and trying to find the best way to do it, and I've had some side conversation with Jim McCarthy is a box culvert. So we, we essentially cut the roadway out wide. Like it's only like a two foot crossing there, but cutting it like 10 foot or 12 foot, putting in two head walls and a, essentially a road surface, a thick piece of concrete, engineered concrete over that, and that would give it a sufficiently wide enough area that if there's any increase in volume, like when it floods or really anytime it rains, it tends to overtop the road, giving it extra space to go out rather than up. I think a lot of the debris or whatever comes yep. down. No, it gets clogged. There's two pipes there. Mm -hmm. It just plugs it up. And... That, the pipes are not in great shape either. Like oh, they're, yeah. No, yeah. 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 So that's, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not been lost. It's just been trying to find the right the right mechanism to do it so that we can get the right permitting for it. Um, Cause there's, from what Jim said, there's complications. Sometimes it's a delicate dance between it's a box culvert and it's a bridge. Um, and if we cross into the bridge realm that does weird things to the insurance. So it's just trying to find that, that, that perfect spot where we're able to do it the right way. And we don't have a situation where you'll lose 30 feet worth of, of space to, to rocks and stuff like that on really the entire length of that from when it comes under that pipe of 422 and goes down. We don't want to do that to you. That's that's an awful thing to have forced on you. So, again, maybe not not as quick as anybody, myself included, would like because I drive that every day. But it, it's it's something that we're still trying to keep keep on the radar and keep moving. No, so I, mean, we have to, I mean, the engineers did a lot of work for that. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Oh no 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 no! They wouldn't have to start over. We. Yeah. Yeah, this, this would be a situation where most of the most of the engineering work is done. It would just be tailoring it a little bit for what we determine the solution to be and then figuring out if we have to ask for like a GP11 permit because of it being a like waterway. So again, not not off the, it's not on the, the official agenda, but it's still, it's something that I, I pick at to see if there's anything we can do or if there's any grants that we can go after that aren't necessarily the uh, inflated Thing that BCC wanted to do it would probably work really nice, but it's it's way overkill for what we're trying to accomplish. 
Okay. How do I make this go away? What is it? Yeah. Sure. Excuse me. Bring the came up again. I don't want to click on anything because there. It just wants you to touch it. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> like, it's, it's like being a mechanic. If you're in a field long enough, you can just put your hand on things and they start working. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, next is also a culvert. It's one of the other culverts. It's the uh, culvert on Marion Drive north of School Road by Oscar Manbeck. Uh, McCarthy Engineering provided a cost estimate of $59,423.79 to replace this culvert, again, largely using our road crew. Uh, we are waiting for the permits on this project, again, the GP11s. Uh, this one is substantially cheaper because it does not require guardrail, and guardrail is extremely expensive, and it cannot be installed by our road crew. I mean, functionally it can, yeah. but for liability, liability, liability reasons, it cannot. Yeah. Um, just as an aside, with those two jobs alone, with what we currently have in the checking account, that leaves us with about $105,000. There's funds and savings that we could move over, uh, but the, the funds are running out. Okay. Yeah. So we had, when we had budgeted, we had assumed we would be moving some out of the savings yeah. to be able yeah. to accomplish, yeah. whether it was the oil yeah. chip or anything else. So that's not to sound alarmist that's that's actually yeah. that's a structural element because we have yeah. a several years of I'll, I'll call surplus in the savings account because right. of not doing road work yeah. so it just i, I just want to let everyone know when did so, we get our liquid fuels money last year uh we, we got one yeah we got one well, we get turned back and then we got liquid fuel oh uh, yeah yeah we got turned back i think yeah. two or three months ago yeah, yeah. So when we so get the it's, we'd have to check the dates. Yeah. There's another one coming in. Yeah. Yeah. And I still have to get that working too. Yeah. I still haven't got that working. So I'll be in Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. While we're, while we're talking about like budget stuff, one of the things that I'd, I'd like to, to see, and like whether it's you or Dan, um, you've started doing an excellent job of it on yeah. the Thursday night. Um, maybe identifying a couple of key accounts, like, like the road, road work yeah. related ones and putting together a real simple performance report of like we're, I don't know, two thirds of the way through the year, we're either above or below. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, okay. and say super yeah. simple, but just at kind yeah. of a barometer okay. for like the, the things that are the most expensive okay. that we, we spend on to see if we're, we're properly allocated yeah. or if there's something that as we go to set the 2022 budget sure. as sure. as a kind of a, a guiding, uh, a compass on, okay, we need to either go up or we can reduce this down. Oh, absolutely, no problem. Okay. Uh, the next culvert is on Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover's Farm. Uh, this again has been designed. Um, I don't have the cost estimate in front of me, but it's it's there. I believe that was a similar around ninety thousand dollar mark. That there were two that were around ninety and one that was around sixty. Um, we are again just waiting for permits on this one. And this is the one that they estimated between ninety and one hundred nineteen thousand. Yeah. Um, so every. Thing other than the guide rails is 48,000. Yeah. So half of that project is it's guide rails. rails. Yeah, guide rails are very expensive. That's again, yeah. like just going back to the, the Richland project that we did. Um, that's actually why we skipped the guide rails and opted to go with the sign. Guide rails would have been better, but it was oh, a- you're talking about um, Hickory. Um, Hickory. Hickory, thank you, thank yeah. you. I always yeah. I always yeah. screw the two of those up, but Hickory Road, um, we, we omitted the guide rails because, simply because of cost. It would have been ideal to put them in, but uh, the signage was, I'll say equally effective and mm -hmm. a lot cheaper, astronomically cheaper. So unfortunately with the, the culverts, we don't have the luxury of doing that. They have to have guide rails. Um, next item on the agenda, mowing has been completed on Route 419. Uh, Butch, I believe that was that was all you. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Um, we have uh, some additional road related stuff. Uh, Spur Road and School Road intersection. Uh, Tulpahawken Township is at this point just waiting for Reber and Zerby to put down the asphalt. Uh, I did have a, an email conversation back and forth with Jim McCarthy and Andy. We can actually put a stop sign there. There is a, an interesting no, rule. No, we, did. We, did. Uh, we did? Okay, good. So we, we have to now adopt that uh, via an ordinance. Ideally, you're actually supposed to do the ordinance first. Um, but it, because of it being a lesser traveled road, quote unquote, we are allowed to put a stop sign there as long as it is not in the intersection on the, the school road side being the, the major road. So uh, I'll reach out to Courtney and make sure that she has the ordinance ready for Thursday night uh, so that we can properly ratify the installation of that stop sign there. I, I had kind of gone down the avenue of like, I know stop signs are incredibly hard to place normally, putting in some sort of caution or yield sign, which are a much simpler sort of thing, again, just adoptable by ordinance. But uh, evidently there is a provision in there for 
similar sorts of things with a low volume road where you can just you can place a stop sign on the the lesser traveled of the two roads so yep yeah yeah yeah, I, I had figured you wanted to put the spur sign on Spur Road, but uh, I, I hadn't realized you placed the stop sign yet. But that's that's okay. I, honestly, I don't think it's going to be a, a problem. We just have to make sure that we adopt the ordinance like right away. Same thing we did with the dangerous intersection sign. Um, next is the 979 William Penn Boulevard flooding situation. Uh, pretty much everything is outside of our right of way, uh, really being that uh, the pipe goes to within one foot of the edge of the the, the right of way. Uh, therefore, if we were to do anything, an easement would be needed. Um, however, the property owner is actually going down the avenue of uh, installing a pipe connected to that pipe and funneling the, the water around to the rear side of his property. Um, the preliminary drawing is over with Jim McCarthy. He would have to approve it um, after they, they do a little more of a substantial drawing, but this would be uh, actually entirely within the homeowner's uh, responsibility to do. Um, and we wouldn't have to do anything other than potentially go out and clean the pipe out before they, they connect it. Potentially, and that's where we need Jim McCarthy, like from the engineering capacity to evaluate where, where the water is, uh, infiltration rates, things like that, to make sure that we're not dumping water behind somebody's house and then flooding their basement out. We want to problem solve, not problem shift. So obviously if we have to change and go back to the original plan of a settling basin on the other side of the pipe rather than them connecting a pipe up and moving it we certainly will but that's the avenue that the homeowner wanted to go down after talking to the engineering company yeah. so we'll have to just at this point yeah sit back and monitor yeah um and really just really the only thing we would do is to make sure jim mccarthy keeps on top of the property that is doing the renovations across the way to make sure they're doing them right and that that uh, that retention pond works as designed and we don't have a situation where that is resulting in a difference in, in stormwater runoff. Yeah. And just as an aside to what Don just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, Tulpe View has its own water collection system. It's quite extensive. There's uh, an issue with people uh, discharging their grass clippings into the roadway mm -hmm. and into the, the drain system, mm -hmm. essentially. I guess that's uh, that's something that falls under some code. How can we notify residents about that? We'd, we'd have to either send a letter yeah. or do a call or if we have could emails on the website yeah we, we can absolutely put it on the yeah, website it's part of yeah, motor that's vehicle what code of what it is. Yeah. Um, because that 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 could potentially be a problem for, for it's my community but it could yeah. be a big problem not so much as if they're clogging up the drains their houses are going to get flooded yeah it's not going to use the drainage the system most, effectively. most direct way would yeah. be maybe just print out some flyers and stick them in people's doors because that's a pretty targeted thing we don't have yeah. i mean other than like main street we don't have a lot of storm sewer infrastructure mm -hmm. otherwise okay. um otherwise we'd have to mail something and mailing mailing gets pricey right, right. no so, so so i guess can i ask permission from the board if we could type up something brief yeah. so that could go door to door and leave it in in that community's my community's residence so that it's from the township saying this is part of motor vehicle code please not discharge your grass and leaf clippings into yeah. the street because of this issue yeah, I would say like the only I have the utmost faith in you doing yeah. that, but I would say just circulate oh, no, it, no, circulate no. it with yeah. the group yeah, before we, we send we it. Do. Yeah, quote the motor. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and then exactly. if there's yeah. any penalties yeah. or fines, right. not that we would necessarily levy right. them, but penalties right. or fines for like you know this is this is a risk. Right, it's subject to this sort of thing. Um, the real the real danger is clogging the storm sewer right. and then flooding your basement or your neighbor's right. basements. Right. Please be no. considerate. Yeah, just like with any letter, I would we, we, we do, workshop we it. Do and mm -hmm. uh, before because then it's just much easier for me to literally walk around my neighborhood, put it in everyone's doorway, and mm -hmm. say, "Hey, you know, this is a problem we want to prevent." Yep. Because we had three homes that had flooding mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, Don. Follow on the subject of culverts. Yeah. Uh, this last past rain we had with a storm. Mm -hmm. The people from Mary Cavalry down to Hufflefinger. Yeah. Their basements were flooded. Okay. Yeah. So there were. Give us a call and let, let yeah. the office know because John went around, he had about a dozen phone calls. We, he made reports and we are potentially getting money from FEMA. Call the office. Sue will let John know. John will go. He needs pictures. He needs any receipts that they have. He needs to fill out reports please pass on the word to anyone and everyone call the office because the more call call, call, call the, Sue. yeah call Sue. 
because the more information we have, we're, we're, we now have an active emergency management coordinator. He will get the report out and try to get funding so that people don't have to pay out of pocket. They may have to pay out of pocket initially, but they might potentially they might get money reimbursed. back. Yeah, reimbursed. Yeah, so that's there's actually yeah. twofold. This yeah. is the thing that Al had talked about with trying to change that. That's something that like Butch and I are going to have to go out and look at because it's 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 not quite as simple as Al made it out to be, but just like putting in a wall. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. And and just for everybody's kind of understanding that that rainstorm that we had, uh, there's a very high likelihood that even if we had made changes, you still would have had flooding. We well, had- That was a hurricane. Yeah, as I say, we- only had the 500 year flood. Yeah, yeah, we had so much water mm -hmm. in such a short amount of time that we had like easily, I'm gonna throw out probably 20 houses. Like when I stopped and talked to the fire company when I was driving around, they they pu personally pumped out like nine houses and i know like john was out doing yeah. stuff and there were there was a ton of people that had flooding whether it was because they didn't have a sump pump or their sump pump failed or they don't normally have any flooding so they just don't have any sort of like french drain or whatever the situation is it was an astronomical almost un inconceivable amount of water in that short window of time normally you would not well no no i mean right yeah i mean and it's that's that's one of the things that uh, unfortunately everybody runs that risk like yes kelly i believe it was the summer of 2012 yeah when that really flooded behind mary mm -hmm. and al yeah and the township was doing something then yeah and nothing ever got done yeah so i, I think they started on something because i think there was some original like a little bit of excavation there um, I don't think it was, I don't think it was 5,000. I think it was like one or two, but it was about a pipe that because of the, yeah. 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 And then something to do with coming across. Yeah. The, the concern well, I is. I thought it was supposed to come from the 422 to Marion intersection down Marianne's. Property, property into the storm sewer. Into that st storm yeah. sewer in front of our house. So there's 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 existing pipe work there, and that's why, like I said about the owl, like just saying put some cinder blocks there. It's not that simple, um, but we do have a little bit of money. It's certainly not the entirety of the project. It would barely pay for the pipe, but we need to look at what we need to do short term and what we need to do long term, um, and that's something that I know last month you and I had talked about trying to go out and do something with that. And we just haven't gotten to it yet, but um all things being equal even if we had done that there's a very very high likelihood that you still would have had flooding there like i know when i tried to come home that evening uh there was and this is not an exaggeration there was easily three feet of water over the road on canal road it was a lot of water so again much like the 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 pipes on canal not not lost not forgotten uh we just we've had other things that we've been doing or working on and we just haven't gotten there yet because it's not quite as simple as it seems on the surface Okay. Uh, we touched on this earlier, so I'll touch on it very briefly. The Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, we have lodged uh, at this point what are the initial uh, object objections to things and are going in on a traffic study along with Wolmelsdorf Borough. Uh, at this point, we're just waiting for Wolmelsdorf Borough's action on this as they're the one coordinating the traffic study. Um, Jim, you'll be kind of running point on that. I know I've had some conversations with Dan Klein. I'm sure you've probably been in touch with him too. Uh, as well as some of the other residents of, of Stonecroft who have kind of taken up the, the charge of, of keeping on top of that. But as more of this starts to develop, because it is very, very early on in the process, we'll, we'll obviously uh, keep apprised of that and share that with everybody in, in the community and, and discuss it openly at meetings. Okay, next is building maintenance. Uh, this is something that I, I won't, again, dwell too much on because there's a lot of uh, outside of the meeting homework that we each need to individually do. Um, we need to have a discussion around uh, proper allocation of funds for if we need to renovate this building or we need to discuss potentially uh, breaking ground on a new space that's a little more purpose built and uh, would be more cost effective than trying to rehab our current building fully. We um, have had no response from any contractors. Almost every day that I'm here, I call about five to seven people. And now the new line is, well, we can't get there till next year. And I say, okay, I just need an estimate. Yeah. So it, it's no response at this point. But again, just briefly for this room alone, we're looking at 50 to $60,000. 
to do the what is it the air conditioning and ac hookup well, that was the about windows 17. the windows yeah, alone yeah. the windows alone are like 45 yeah. to fifty thousand yeah. dollars yeah just for just for the yeah. side of the building but the, to do the ac hookup was about seventeen thousand. that was for all three yeah yeah we got a curb estimate uh not excuse me sidewalk mm -hmm. estimate for 6800 and the, the paving, parking anyway. parking the lot paving, paving. That so, was like 40 grand for yeah. the parking lot. So so we're looking at well over a hundred thousand dollars just for some small projects, which doesn't open up any more of the building to use. Yeah. It doesn't it do doesn't, anything. It doesn't cover yeah. uh, any yeah. of the other windows, yeah. it doesn't cover Perfect. the second floor yeah. heating and air conditioning, it doesn't yeah. cover the the floor in the second yeah. floor, it doesn't cover any of the, the ADA requirements for right. being able to use the yeah. second floor, Something. doesn't yeah. cover like renovations to bathroom yeah. spaces again for like ADA compliance. That the what we need to do and what we're working on doing just for everybody's understanding is trying to really give it a pro and con side by side comparison of here's our current building. Here are all the costs that we would have to incur to be able to make it really the way that it should be repointing the bricks, replacing the windows, doing the rest of the soffits, um, doing the, the floor upstairs, the heating unit, heating and air conditioning upstairs, the air conditioning downstairs, drop ceilings, new lighting, um, any renovations or additions that we have to do from a plumbing standpoint, because I'm sure we'd probably have to put a bathroom on the second floor for, for accessibility reasons, like comparing that directly against, okay, how much would it be to buy land nearby, put a, a, a suitable building in and have the proper amenities in from the get go. Yeah. Um, I mean, the bottom line is, is that there's very limited use of this building and I'd like to see better use of a building so that it's, it's more accessible to the community in general. Yeah. And so that's, that's, that's my end goal. And end goal, whether it's yeah. here or there, yeah. I'd like to see us have a space that is able to be used for more than just like having meetings. In. Yep. Um, whether it's the community association wants to do uh, bingo nights, or we want to rent out a, a space that's suitably sized to have people have like a wedding reception or something in it, like they used to do with the, the social hall on main street. Um, and especially for consideration, if we go to, to do any sort of new building, I want to make sure that we have sufficient property to be able to bring the, the park with us. Mm -hmm. So if the community association is doing anything with the park that they would, whether it's here or yeah. over there, that we would give them suitable enough space to have like a baseball field, a soccer field. If we want to put in a tennis court, a playground, a walking track, want to make sure that we have all of that space in addition to the things that we're viewing as municipal requirements in terms of meeting space or evacuation center or uh, a, a, an outbuilding for for trucks and salt sheds and things like that we need to bring all of that into the equation to make sure that we're, we're properly uh complaining uh comparing the plans for dollars and cents between okay do we do we stay or, or do we go um, I put together, it's on the, the Google Drive, just a couple of bullet points of what I think are critical things. Please feel free to add, but um, yeah, I have it here. I'll, I'll read it off. Okay. I'll read it off. So um, if, we're, if we were to do anything with a large a new space, I would want to have a large meeting room that you'd be able to subdivide into two. That mm -hmm. way you could have a, a meeting room kind of of this size, but if there was a particularly good turnout or we do a town hall around Act 537 or anything else, we would be able to open up the rear wall and have additional space. Likewise, that would be good for things like bingo nights, or if you run it out for you know wedding receptions, receptions or whatever. Yeah. Um, having a couple of small meeting spaces, like smaller rooms off of that. So that could be used for things like executive session, tax collector sitting dates, um, uh, uh, an impromptu, I'll call it a war room, if you had an emergency that you had to respond to, like somebody walks away from the, the, the veterans home there on Main Street. Um, space for the history and the alumni rooms to be properly relocated and properly equipped to make sure that people the, could see it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we'd be yeah. able to, because of it being on the yeah. second floor, it's extremely problematic yeah. to open it to the public right. I'd wholesale. To but, have things like in and around buildings that people could see it and mm -hmm. properly, you know, in case glass closures, et cetera. Or if we had nice. the building set up a certain way, you could actually, yeah. without burdening Sue, you could yeah. potentially have it open more to the yeah. public if somebody was willing to volunteer and come in and do it. Yeah. Um, Proper spaces to have the HVAC electrical networking and audio equipment properly not installed, in file not in your file room. Yeah. Um, right. And again, that's like some people don't realize our computer system, it, it, to me, I, it's holding together on a wish and a prayer. Yeah. We need an upgrade like tremendously. So yeah. that's, that was actually one of the things yeah. I had in the comments. I need to hang the other rack over there and pull the wires over. Um, it's working. I wouldn't say on a wing and a prayer. It's working. It's stable. It's certainly not ideal. It's certainly not industry best practice. 
Um, and th there's one simple reason for that is we're trying to jam 2021 practice into a like 18 like late 1800s 1900s right. building right like i don't know when the building was i want to say early 1900s this part yeah 31, was 1931. 31 okay so yeah we're, we're basically trying to jam 100 years difference in standards into a space that was never really intended, intended for yeah. that so it, it works but it could be a lot yeah. better I'll, I'll be the first right. person to say that um having a, a proper place other than the basement the basement looks like you should film a horror film in it um that uh, we have the proper water equipment the well pressure tank sterilizers things like that hot water heater um proper storage closets so that we're not just jamming stuff upstairs file rooms i'm writing like, that letter to um, Shalom. yeah I'm doing it. Um, having a sufficiently sized office area where you could have roughly three to four desks set up yeah. uh, enough space for sue to be able to to work and not have like you have a very good filing system, Sue, and no, I'm impressed, but, <laughs> um, but there's a lot of but, stuff that's but, stacked like just for me, just to have space. Um, like when somebody presents a project, a sketch plan to planning commission, mm -hmm. well, I, I have to keep that kind of in there until that project is completed. Yeah. You know, it, and there's more than one usually yeah. it's just, it, there's not enough space in there. Yeah. It's the bottom line. Yeah. So more space, uh, having uh, we have like a little kitchenette sort of thing over there, but if we were going to build or do something, having an actual proper kitchen, like we'd have to go through the avenues of like serve safe and everything else like that. But that would be, I think, helpful from an evacuation right. center standpoint, or if you're doing a reception or. Can I just briefly touch on that? Yeah, absolutely. Go for so it. So we've been talking with the other emergency management coordinators around the, the county. Um, we would need essentially a stove, a fridge, a sink, and some minor cabinetry. Um, Marion would if there was an emergency or like we had with this flooding hmm. we would serve as an emergency um like a, a how oh, i can't remember the, the word i'm looking for if we would be if let's say people had to evacuate their homes if we had a proper space people would be able to come to the building and from there they would be sent to different locations i understand the schools are actually the disaster centers yeah, we, we'd be so, a triage location right, so, so basically we would be a collection point thank hmm. you we'd be a collection point, which would be unique because again, like there's not that many collection points and where would people think to go in case of an emergency if they knew that the building was a collection point mm -hmm. and could properly and safely keep them, then that would be a very good situation from the emergency management standpoint. It would be a very easier, it would be much easier thing to deal with. But instead of people calling different locations, it would be a coordinated event you come to the building and from the building you'd be distributed to other locations mm -hmm. so yeah and that's one of the one of the bullet points on there was like space for emergency response like if we had flooding collection yeah. point or otherwise if we had to have people here for a short period of time we'd right. be able to do things like set up cots and say like hey it's going to be a little bit until somebody can you know right. shuttle you to wherever you need to go um right now we've got a little bit of space but it's we, we it's, it's minimal it's this, extremely this minimal doesn't meet the requirements um well, and I know a few years ago, sometime here, um, American House had, in, had inquired whether they could send people here in an emergency, and the insurance company had an issue with that. Mm -hmm. right? So, right. I mean, that's the other thing. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to talk about it, but it is it is something that I think technically we're supposed to be addressing as a municipality, and we just haven't. Okay. Like it's it's been a situation where we haven't had an EMC other than John for a very long mm -hmm. time. And it's just been kind of out of sight, out of mind. Nobody has really taken up the the charge on trying to figure it out or talking to the insurance to say like, you know, it might be X number of dollars extra per month, but it is technically a service that we're supposed to be yep. offering. Um, and then just basic other stuff, like making sure we have a sufficient number of bathrooms, something for the office areas, yep. uh, something for the public area. Um, I'd still, if we do go to the, the, the mech mechanism of breaking ground or anything like that, it'd be good to have a bathroom out in the shop where the, the road crew yeah. has their equipment. Well, they need an eye um, wash station. Well, yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah. basic I, things. Basic like, things, the eye wash station, even a hazmat shower. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are things like, you know, should be standard. And, and again, yeah. it comes down to the, we're, yeah. we're, we're trying to meet current 2021 standards yeah. in a like 1931 building. Yeah. It's, it's things that were never even remotely considered when the building was built because it was a school originally right. part was built in the 1800s oh right. yeah so okay yeah see someone else is staying away at night 
wishing they had enough money to do what it, what it has to be done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's oh, I, constantly. The way constantly. Was talking about the playground. Yeah. Yep. It's a 18th century playground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't have the money to do it. Yep. You're, yeah. you're talking about uh, you're, a wish, what a wish right. is. Yeah. About right. that long. Yep. The, it's nice to wish. And it's nice to plan. Yeah. So, but, but so, so Don, yeah. rec recognizing the constraints on money, because like I'm, I'm right there with you, is we, we're, we're trying to figure out how much we would have to budget out over like, let's say the next five to 10 years in order to get the building, if we're going to stay how in the building. 20 to 25 years. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, I was being a little, little generous yeah. on that. Yeah. But, um, figuring out, okay, if we're going to chip away at this slowly, how much are we going to be spending annually? How does that stack against if we were to build somewhere new, where does that track? Are we looking at spending $3,000 a month for renovations here? Are we looking at spending $3,000 a month on, a, on essentially a mortgage payment? Um, additionally, the way the American Rescue Plan funding around like COVID is, we have, I believe it's like ex in excess of $250,000 over this year and next year. Uh, 200,000. 200,000, thank yeah. you. Um, there's a, a respectable enough chunk of money. It's not a huge, huge amount, but it's enough to take a dent out of things that we need to consider really bringing that into the mix. Cause that, that does change the game a little bit in terms of that's, that's a pretty decent amount of our operating mm -hmm. budget annually that we just miraculously got for, for real, I, I don't want to say no reason because it was related to COVID, but it was something that we had no expectation of getting and we have to use it in very specific ways. One of the ways is responding to uh, future proofing if there isn't another pandemic in, in in the future we can't just like carte blanche spend the money and say oh we're going to give the mtca fifty thousand dollars that would be nice right um and there's some other creative accounting shell games i know i talked to I kelly know, about that all three of you came on board yeah you all thought about who's going to have grants or grants out there right and, the dcnr i mean too yeah. and, and, and yeah other yeah than that, I mean, yeah it's got to be something else well we we on keep on looking yeah we, so we try I to look, find them yeah. they're they're yeah. fewer yeah. and far between like they're, they're not that there were that many to begin with but there's less now than there had been um and this was one of the concerns that we keep bringing up about act 537 depending on how far back you go there were grants galore not so much the case anymore there's some things that uh, may be coming through at the federal level that we can try and pursue that might work for that sort of thing but it is something that we actively look at because whether it's like something we stumble across for like, oh, the community association, this will work for the parks or, oh, there's something that we can do to get windows or heating upgrades or whatever. We try to, we try to keep on top of that. And uh, in credit to McCarthy Engineering, they usually, if they spot one too, they'll, they'll send it our way and say, hey, this might work for you. Um, we're trying to find every avenue we can to not have to spend money, but the cold hard reality is whether it's this building, keeping it from falling down, like we did with the, the roof work a couple of years ago, uh, or considering building a new space, it really needs to come down to a black and white dollars and cents comparison. Mm -hmm. What do we need to do to keep our, our current thing running? Is it more advantageous from a use and cost standpoint to stay, or is it actually the same amount or cheaper to, to do something different? And that's, we want to be as impartial and critical about it as we possibly can. And to your point, the, the wish list is a mile long. We're not going to get every single right. thing on there. But if we're going to try and design a plan, we want to make sure that we're trying to bring in as many or all of those things into the plan as we can. We don't want to, we don't right. want to, especially if we built something, we don't yeah. want to build it and go, we right. forgot sure. about that thing. We can't do anything yeah. about it now. I know, I know. So, from an emergency management standpoint, John started going to other buildings and locations and speaking with other communities and saying, what, do you, what it, is it that you did and what is what he went and looked at buildings and say, what are you doing? And he's continuing to do that. We're not looking at doing anything fancy. We're not looking at doing anything extravagant. We want something functional, but I feel like I'm a resident here. My children are growing up here. I don't want to commit any taxpayer dollars to something that I'm not willing to commit to because this is not a five-year plan. This is not a 10-year plan. It's probably a 20, 25-year plan. But yeah, the exactly, exactly. Then, right. I, right. Commit, committed to it. Right. Yes. I don't, I don't want to commit something, but I also want to have the foresight over what are our needs now? Well, what are our needs going to be in 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now? Do we need to consider having like a substation office for a police department? Because as I understand over the years, uh, policing has changed in this area. We used to have the police out of this building, but we no longer do. Our volume, excuse me, our um, uh, census count increased. 
So are we going to have a little bit more residents? Obviously, as far as building new homes, et cetera, that's, that's not a- uh, Population right, growth population. isn't necessarily right. one of the largest right. concerns, right. but right. You, you could have a situation where, uh, I don't know, there, I think there's literally one other place that's zoned for medium residential that you could have a uh, similar development to like right. Stonecroft put in. So you could see some growth there. You could see some places that are like town center that are, if a building got knocked over, you could have like a, a multifamily, like right. a, a split, but not a huge concern, but it's something right. that we have to be cognizant right. of. But I want to, I want to be able to use everyone's input and including people from the community. What is it that we need as a township? What, what are our needs now? What are our needs going to be anticipated in 10, 15, 30, 40, 50 years from now? And how would a building serve that? I want to see people come to the building for other than just meetings. Just meetings. I'd like to see parties. I'd like to see receptions. I'd like to see other community events happen at a Marion Town Township slash community center. Yeah, That I would mean, be ideal. Uh, I'd like to see a nice big park that is more ADA accessible where you see more children, where you see adults come to walk and sit and just enjoy the moments of the day. Like on a gorgeous day like this, I, I grew up in New York. We went to the park all the time and our parks were concrete. Um, we went all the time because there were prettier places to go and, and walk around. And just as much as you saw children, you saw adults there too. So I, I want to, before I commit anything or anyone to paying for this, we're going to make sure we have all of our ducks lined up in a row, all the, all, everything that we could possibly conceive of and, and no dollars and cents wise what we're going to commit ourselves in our community to, because I will not spend your money without knowing exactly where that money's going. Yep. No, I completely yeah. agree. And just Should we consider hiring a, a grant writer since our grants one, aren't getting yeah. approved because I think we none of us are really capable. Yes. Of well, so uh, yes and no. Like the um, I'll, I'll I'll just temper that with the the ones that we've put into BCCD. I know they've been they've been done right. We've gotten a ton of those in the past. The problem is that the genie is kind of out of the bottle on that one. A lot of other people know, and the competition for right. the grant is that much higher. And they tend to award to larger projects rather than smaller ones. Um, in terms of like the playground grant, I did stuff, Irene did stuff. And I mean, maybe there's, there's certainly a difference in quality on a professional, but um, we followed the requirements to the letter of what you're supposed to submit. And again, it's just, it's highly competitive. It wasn't a deficiency so much on the application that was put in by the MTCA. It's just, there was a lot of other competition and somebody probably got scored just slightly higher. I know the, I know the, the DCNR folks had remarked that our playground is in, in dire, dire need. They actually use it as a, a, an example of what a playground shouldn't be. But uh, there may have been other playgrounds that, for one reason or another, scored higher on their rubric. It's. Well, I'm thinking of the grant writers. How much money for us to go over to the third township? Oh, the the open space thing. And it's a waste of money. No, it, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a waste. No, it was not. It wasn't a waste of money, Don. So that's there's there's a number of things that that study opens doors for, and one of the big things, and I'll, I'll go back to the you know the scoring rubric, that. The fact that we have an open space plan and the fact that it's a joint open space plan is two very large check boxes on how they score grant applications. We didn't get it, but it's, there's no guarantee. It's not like the lottery. There's a little bit, a little bit better chance of that, but um, it it's, say it's not, it's not, you won't, you exactly. Won't, you'll get it. Yeah. So My it's, I mean, you grant, can, you can grant submit that grant every year. year. Yeah. The people who are giving out the grants know those grant writers. Who's, whose applications yeah. do they look at first? That's they look true. at theirs because, oh, they've submitted perfect grants in the past. Let's look at theirs first. And, they and then there's them. ours and they go. They just keep on putting the same application mm -hmm. in and they get it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, much like the spending money statement, I don't want to spend money if we don't right. have to. But when we get to that point, like, let's, let's maybe try and right. figure out what we're doing with right. this building Jim versus another building. Has, Right. Put pointers in the direction. Of right. Yeah. Grant. Yeah. Well, we actually, the lady that's doing the income study also right. does grants. Yeah. Right. And, right. And that's with respect to that project. The, the thing is, is that we're doing this. And again, John has been speaking to a lot of people. They're giving us a lot of information over what, what that was part of what I wanted to ask. He, he wants to have permission to explore grants. And so he needs our DUNS number and our SAM information so that when he's looking at some of this stuff, he's like, you know, rule of thumb is ask for twice for what you need and you'll be lucky if you get half, which is what exactly it is yeah. what you need. So I know he wanted to ask permission to explore the option of grants. 
And they talked about lots of different things that I never would have thought of. So he's going to come up with some sort of comprehensive plan with respect to EMC stuff. At the same time, some of that may overlap with our wishes on a building because some of those funds could be used for equipment, but it may be able to use for space, so to speak. So if there's a designated room that could cover the cost of perhaps some construction of that particular room, again, it alleviates some of our overall general costs. So I think once we know what we're doing, once we come up with a better plan, and part of that plan is having the wish list. When I spoke to one contractor, they said you either have to have an architect or you have to have a drawing. It's, it is physically drawing up a, a, a description over what we would want in a building, in, in a space. Yeah. Of course, not being an architect, you know, you have to understand what's capable of a roof, et cetera, and all that other stuff. Whether it's conventional build or pole building builds, things like that is, is, is we need to take the step back and, and sit down, do drawings, see what our functional space would be and go from there and move forward. This way we could get the dollars and cents. We could start looking at grants. We could also reach out to companies and say, hey, listen, you know, we want to put in a big meeting room, but it's, it's in excess of this amount of money. Would you be able to give us a donation? Of course, then it, it, we, we put up a plaque and say donated by or contribution by. These are things that we can actively do and pursue, um, but we have to put together the projects, put it into literally black and white non-paper, and we can move forward and start looking for money and looking and, for grants. And the, there's other yeah. creative things that we can do, like you had said about getting the, yeah. the stuff for the emergency spaces. There are things sometimes that you can relate to those. Exactly. And like, I'll, I'll use the meeting room as a prime example. Let's say we wanted to get additional audio visual equipment for the front of the room. Like we have the two projectors, we need to do some stuff with the walls to be able to use them. We could also get television screens. You can make the argument that when you're doing a disaster response, you need to put notices up and be able to change them. Yeah. Money for the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to say something else too, when you were, you were going there Sorry. was, no, no, it's okay. I, yeah. I had it and I, it was gone. It was something with the community association. Um, if people are going to do donations, that might be something that we could work with the community association oh, on and have like the large meeting room, obviously is going to be a community gathering space. It may be a situation where we work with them for kind of the, the tax advantage of people being able to donate and using it so that it's set up the way the community association has some input on for like, yeah, we're going to do bingo. We're going to do craft shows. We're going to yeah. do whatever that there, there are some creative things that we can do to try to, to fit certain things. Um, but when we get there, especially on larger things, I'm not opposed to a grant writer. It's just been, we've been trying to keep costs down. So, and again, just because of the complexity aspect of it, the BCC grant for the playground isn't actually all that complicated in the grand scheme of grant writing. Don't um, the grant writers write their, their salary into the grant, basically? Sort of, sort of, right? sort of, but you have to get the grant or otherwise you have to pay yeah, them. Yeah, you know, pocket. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think... You know, John was in that one building a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I'm so excited about it. Maybe mm -hmm. we can even just get their their schematics on their own building. Um, yeah, and he and wanted to see if there was a time where we could all meet and go out to that building to yeah. see it. It's about an hour's drive away, and he was asking if anyone had, like, a Saturday afternoon where we could all go out there. He included to. So, you know, to, to see the physical location. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a dream, but I think also with what's going on with our weather and flooding and everything else, I mean, I'm waiting till these windows blow out. You know, I, I'm waiting till the brick falls yeah, off yeah. The, the building, and <laughs> then we it. won't be able to have people in the building because of safety concerns. You know, we have to get estimates. Yeah. We absolutely yeah, we already know. Yeah. Right, without right. without getting the estimates, right. we already know that this building is not the answer. Right. This building is going to fall down. The right. back wall is now bowing out. Oh, the yeah. back. All the windows are shot. Yeah. The back wall has been bowing out for a very long yeah. time. Right. Apparently. Well, this. This but, building is not the long-term answer. We know what we need. Right. So we should start just looking in that direction and getting the right people on board to try and get yeah. some and grants and any money that's out there to happen. Due, due diligence, yeah. we should still side by side right. just to make sure that we're I'm, not right. going both feet into the deep end of the pool. Right. Oh yeah, no, guaranteed. Right. Guaranteed right. and under, that's understandably that's and rightfully so. I'm, that's why I'm collecting numbers, yep. you know. You know, I think just to rehab between windows and brick repointing, I think we're going to be looking at two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars. So I googled, yeah, how much is brick repointing in Pennsylvania? Yeah, oh, you did. Yeah. I did. I forget the. It's like, like ten dollars a square foot, foot isn't it? Um, Butch and I kind of like roughly measure yeah. the building. Yeah. Um, what did we say? A hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 
I think that's if we're lucky. If stuff, I mean, that could be give or take. Yeah, yeah. And but, so there's there's yeah. a certain variance there, but it's it's not going to be yeah. cheap, and it's something that if you have a brick building, you have to do periodically, and yeah. nobody's done it. Yeah. So and there are people that we are aware of that would love to buy this building, and they'll put the two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars into it and continue yeah. to use it as right. a school. And so the those people who want to keep issue. this as a school, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. there's so many things. Honestly, if we if if you would, I think. You would look at having access to the upstairs if we had an elevator, bathrooms, all that stuff. I think you're easily looking between five to six hundred thousand in this right. building alone just to get it usable. All yeah, that's usable. speaking honestly, that's yeah. probably low. Yeah. On the grand scheme of things. And, and to me, I, it just it's it's inconvenient. It, it, I mean, I don't know how else to say it's inconvenient. I like to see a single story. Anyone and everyone, we don't have great ADA access to this location. Anyone and everyone can can use a single story building. Mm -hmm. We no, can't I, flip yeah. this to mm -hmm. It's worst case worst case scenario. Do we build a building over there and make this a play? I don't think so. I, no. I think there's there's weird deed we restrictions. Yeah. restrictions. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. I mean, it's it's something we look at, but I don't think for just the deed the deed aspect alone. Not to mention, uh, honestly speaking, this is just me as a person, not me as a supervisor speaking. I'd hate to see the building get knocked down. It's a very I nice would, building. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's a it's a landmark it's right. just a it's local true. historical it's, reference it's, no, 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 no. it's, it's not a landmark it's it's well okay yeah. it, it's well a, it's it's within the community yeah. it's it's a landmark yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean structurally it's sound yeah the, it the just difference. means well that's yeah. I mean, more, more or less. Yeah. It's, it's uh, not to sound alarmist. We do have some concerns of like the back wall bowing the windows and stuff like that. Well, yeah. I mean, thankfully we've done yeah. some of the stuff when already to prevent, to fall down. like the, the water yeah. damage. Had we not done what we did with the roof, that would have gotten right. worse. And we, there's a very good chance that we would have lost that section of wall there. Yeah. Like it's, it's evident. You can, you can see the amount of water damage Even that is evident on that wall. Space, garage space. They really don't have it. We have our salt stored at Salt Hopkin. We don't have enough space. No, not anymore. Not yeah, anymore. I mean, we, we had to, though. Right. It's the we bottom line to. is we had to. We had to. So, so again, like, you know, there's there's issues that keep on coming up and coming up. It's repetitive. And and we have to, again, have that foresight to think, what are our needs now? What are the community's needs within the next two to three decades? It, it's trying to have that foresight and planning well for it. Because in 20 years from now, we'll say, you know what? Hey, you know, that was a good decision or that was a bad decision. Because when I go to the grocery store, I don't want people pointing fingers saying, you did that to us, you know? Don just looking at me like really, <laughs> but, but but I I I want to be able to put my head down on the pillow at night and say, hey, did 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 I help make a good decision for this community? I mean, honestly, that's where it comes from. It comes yeah. from the gut. It it boils yeah. down to we're trying to be proactive yep. in in everywhere that we possibly can instead of reactive. And some yeah. things some things are unfortunately limited by budget. Roads are a right. prime example of that. Right. But anywhere that we can let's say even spend the same amount of money that we're spending now or would be spending to do it better, more efficiently, okay. more tailored to what the needs are, then that's uh, common sense dictates uh, that you should go with the thing that's going to give you the most bang for your buck. Right. You know, and even just, what did you say? Windows are going to be- 50%. Windows are like 50 or $60,000 okay. just for this room. One room, two, yeah. three, yeah. four. Right yeah. there you have- uh, and That's not even touching the rear yeah, side of the building. Exactly, yeah. And when, when I spoke to the bank, just to get a ballpark idea, our current budget for building repairs is $50,000. We did not spend that. And we haven't been spending that over the years, even though mm -hmm. things need to be done. When I talked to the bank and I said, give me a ballpark idea over monthly payments for a $1 million um, uh, build. And that $50,000 would cover our mortgage payments essentially for that year. So if you would build in that $50,000 instead to a mortgage, granted, we'd have to stay within a million dollar budget. And that doesn't include using the money from the ARP funds. Mm. It doesn't include any grants or anything else that we may be able to get. Or the if, sale of the building. Or that's what yeah, I was just going to say, the building. sale of the building. So that budget essentially could come down because ideally to me is getting that mortgage payment down would be the best scenario. Oh yeah, you want right. to have the lowest right. thing possible. Right. You also still want, uh, granted the maintenance aspect of it will be tremendously less right. on a new building, but right. there are things that you have to budget right. for maintenance. Right. Otherwise you find yourself in the same trap in five to 10 years. Right. And, and things that make the building more self-sufficient needs to have a generator mm -hmm. so that we don't have to worry about power outages. I would recommend looking into even something like solar panels. I was going to say there might be grants right. for solar panels yeah, so in all solar honesty. Panels. 
Um, there is still federal rebate and stuff like that. So that building is truly self-sufficient. Again, it's a community resource. People, you know, don't know where to go. They're gonna say, I'm gonna go to the township building. You know, the numbers close on front. There should be in a way a way to contact any you know of us, you know, after hours of after hours. And so that we could come there, get to the building, help the person out, whatever the need may be, get it sorted out, and then boom, we've helped more of our residents in, in that aspect. Yeah, so, that's uh, not yeah. to go down yeah. like the technical rabbit hole. That's something that we could look at. I don't, I'm hesitant to do it here because yeah. of, again, just trying to shoehorn yeah. more infrastructure in. You can get not terribly complicated phone systems. Like the phone rings, right. Sue answers, but you could, right. you could have a situation where, you know, you have a, a, a an auto attendant, an right. IVR where, hello, you've reached the office after hours. If this is an emergency, press zero. And it yeah. would go to, because it being a phone system, yeah. it, it can be programmed for what's called a hunt group. So right. it would go, okay, I know, to call Jim, Irene, Peter, and John, whoever answers first gets it. Like there's there's a lot of things that you can do that are fairly sophisticated. We don't really have, I mean, we could probably find rack space for it, but right. it would be a lot better to build that sort of functionality in rather right. than try to retrofit. Right. Again, there's, there's so many things that we need to, we need to come up with a physical plan, we need to come up with our wish list, and we need to get everything priced out. We need to look at grants, we need to look at money. And, and see what we can and can't do. Yeah. I mean, that, that this is where we're at right now, I think. Yeah, and, you know? and just, to, just to, to go back to the one of the earlier statements, this really needs to be, after we set requirements and have the numbers for it, this really needs to be a direct comparison, weight, weighted scales, right. one side to the other, which one makes more sense from a dollars yeah. and cents thing. They're really, in, in the oh, effort of, right. of fairness, you can't, you can't bring in personal preference. It's, it's going to cost right. us X number of dollars here, or it's going to cost us, 30 percent less to do it this other way or right. whatever. One hundred percent, and that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to get numbers on this building. Yeah, I've been trying every every time I'm in the office. With that said, open open invitation to anybody in the community, community association, residents, etc. If there are things that you think would be vital to either this building or if we do actually build a new building, if there are things that you say like, yeah, this would make life so much better, or we could do these types of events, or we could do this or that or the other thing, or would have this benefit. Please, uh, I, I know a lot of people have my email. A lot of people are in contact with you too. You can always call the office or uh, send it in. Or we're, we're absolutely open and receptive to ideas uh, of, of things that we may not have even thought of. So well, if you know anybody that would like to donate several acres to us and have the <laughs> yes. building named yeah. after them. We yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like says, uh, doing older like that. A company, okay, and, and he does uh, donate some stuff. So that's fantastic. okay. Yeah, that would be very yeah. good. That would help. Every little bit yeah. helps. Um, okay, so now that we've labored on that fairly extensively, that's something that is that's going to be an ongoing thing. Yep. And thankfully, with the ARP money, we're not under a, a tight deadline to spend it. But there will be okay. guaranteed more discussion around that. Yeah. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Tulpahawken police contracts. The, there's an addendum to our agreement that expires December 31st, 2021. Um, I'm going to say we should vote on that Thursday night. Courtney but, is going to have that Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, that'll be something. I, I thought, uh, the rumor was odd that uh, there, the Tulpahawken police is, is uh, merging with uh, Metal, and that's not no, I, I, I had. I talked to Butch White last okay. night. Yeah. He said, no way. In fact, he said, uh, until another year, they might have another municipality that they will be controlled. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, it's, it's stable. The only thing we have to do is like ra essentially ratify the agreement, but mm -hmm. we don't have the full agreement. Isn't there a resolution too? There, I think there's a resolution. I think it's a situation where we have to. It's a little more than the normal, yeah, but Courtney, I, Courtney will tell yeah, us. But bottom yeah. line is, it's we're gonna we're gonna need to do it. Yeah. Um, and I did um, question Christy, um, the Topak and Secretary. Like, do you send us a letter saying, "Hey, do you want to keep us on?" Or do we send you a letter? Do we send you a letter saying, "Hey, we want to keep on what mm -hmm. we do?" And she said, just um, that that um the letter indicating the rate yeah she said you if that's okay with you just use that as a our letter saying hey do you want to stay on yeah okay. yeah so, and that was fine i said that's fine with me so. okay next item on the agenda is the semi quincentennial for the commonwealth of pa in the usa uh july 4th 2026 
Uh, we received a, an email from Paul Jansen at CELG. They would like all municipalities in Berks County to pass a resolution supporting the PA Commission for the USA semi -Concentennial. According to Paul's second email, we may or may not decide to directly participate, uh, but are not required to participate. Um, based on the description that we got, they're looking for interest to take part in events, and there's really not any direct uh, commitment or requirement other than just us expressing an interest. So again, not under a super tight deadline to that, but I don't have any and objections. Courtney's going to have this. Yeah. To... Yeah. I don't have any principal objections based on the information that we've, we've gotten. So whenever we have paperwork in hand, I'd say whether it's Thursday night or maybe at the next meeting, um, just go in on it. Um, next item is the rental inspection ordinance proposal. Uh, this would allow access to rental properties every other year. Uh, we have a copy of Richland Borough's ordinance. Um, I did get a chance to read that through. I have a couple of points that uh, I think we should consider. Um, I think the, the definition of what is a rental property is good in there. I don't think we have to tweak that too much. Um, the one thing that we do need insight from Andy, and I know Courtney is, is looking at that presently, is the, the way it's worded is if you're renting out to an occupant for more than five days, you're considered a landlord. As that relates to things like Airbnb, we need to see where that stipulation falls because, I mean, you could have somebody staying there for, for more than five days, but I think the, the data that I looked at, most people use an Airbnb for like one to three days, so it kind of fits under that threshold. Okay. We may have to add wording in there to cover that particular type of use. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, that's that's fairly tight. That's good. Um, it's written in a way that if you, it's only if you're making money, uh, for example, let's say somebody like owns a property, owns the next door property, and they they let their, a family member live there at, at no cost. You are not considered a renter under that definition or a landlord under that definition. Whereas if you had charged them and you made money and they were there more than five days, then you would, and you'd have to go through the, the whole motions of the ordinance. Um, the other thing that we'd want to check to make sure that we have a situation of, um, structural non-compliance is the, their size restrictions listed in section four in terms of what, uh, any rental property has to meet in terms of like living room, dining room, bedroom space. Okay. Um, they're, they're fairly small sizes, but I think just as an effort of due diligence, we should do a, a kind of a, a spot check on some of the smaller properties along main street, not that they're being used for rental properties, mm -hmm. mind you, but to make sure that we're not putting an ordinance in place that would result in a high rate of immediate non-compliance if somebody tried to do that. Mm -hmm. um, eight, point, uh, 8 point B, uh, I want us to look at and give some thought to. It's potentially regressive in the sense that it's a penalty to occupants rather than the landlord. Um, wow. So if, yeah, if, if somebody, if the landlord has a citation, if they find in an inspection that, you know, you got to replace these outlets because it's unsafe. If they don't do it, uh, we have the ability to fine and things like that. But ultimately, the tenant is the one that gets evicted because of the landlord's non-compliance. I'd like to see us maybe revisit or reassess how to do that so that we are not putting the burden on the occupant and are instead putting the burden on the landlord, the person who is supposed to be ultimately responsible for the safety of that property. Um, initially, and I need to check with either Andy or Courtney on how best to do this, but if there's a provision that we could put in that would allow us to remediate and charge back. So if we say like your, your roof has a hole in it, water is pouring in on this poor person, rather than kicking them out on the street, we say, look, we've, we've given you notice. We've given you another notice. We've given you a third notice. We have fined you. You have not done it. We are going to continue to fine you at whatever interval. And we are sending somebody out. We're repairing it. And we're sending you the bill. Like do that with the property maintenance. We again, yeah, I, this this I, may actually hold water on. I think that is in the property maintenance. Yeah, process. eventually we can invoke yeah. property maintenance. That what you want? Any, I don't know. We uh, yeah, so I got I got to look. I've, well, there's you all know there's mm -hmm. a property in this community that is a disgrace. Yeah, um, the the, the IPMC booklet is in there. So if you skim yeah. through that, or like there's a digital copy, you might be able to do like a, a search, like Control F for. Um, but there is something in there that we can invoke. I just I'd like to see us harden the language in 8.B for the, the rental um, and change it. Because again, the concern here is when you read it, it is, it is very regressive in the sense that it puts um, somebody who is dealing with a bad situation. Like uh, my roof leaks all the time. My kids keep getting sick. There's mold everywhere. I don't want to be the, the municipality that goes, oh, that sucks. You're evicted. Yeah. Like that's, that's just harsh. Mm -hmm. um, 9.C was the other one. Um, 
the one of the one of the penalties in here for non-compliance uh, for renters or not renters, excuse me, the landlords is uh, potentially imprisonment for up to thirty days. I, I feel that my, that might be a little harsh. Um, we might want to reword that, and I'd, I'd prefer to focus more on the fines and other actions of like remediation and then billing, going after the legal recourse of, of that. Because um, I'm not super keen on throwing people in jail if we don't have to, even it's, as a potential. It's probably in there for the person that says, I'm not doing it. Uh, agreed, yeah. agreed, yeah. agreed. Yeah. But yeah. that, that always. Time you say, okay, well, we'll send you to jail. I, say, I think okay, the, average, yeah. the average person will look at that and say, oh, I don't want to go to jail. Yeah, I, well, I, yeah. I, 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 get, I get that it's largely a scare yeah. tactic, yeah. but I, I go into this with if it's on there and it's it's been ratified and we've approved it, it is something that oh, could yeah. be yeah. levied against somebody. And I, I want to be I very, very careful. Yeah. about putting ourselves or specifically yeah. our signatures on something that could potentially put somebody in jail yeah. for a month. Yeah. Well, so they don't listen to us. That's where they belong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of people uh, that just ignore us for 30 years, yeah. 30 years, ignoring this board and thumbing their nose at us. It's, you know, maybe we need to make things a little tougher on someone. Kelly. Who will be reinforcing the rental that would be craft. Oh, yeah, code so that. craft codes who does like the IPMC and all the other stuff. Uh, one of the big reasons, aside from the fact that that's their speciality, that's their firm that does that. We have outside companies doing things like the, the inspections and everything like that, because they're an impartial third party. You don't have a situation where like, I know Jim is, is pretty heated about that one property, but you don't have a situation where Jim has direct control of it and can go find him, find him, find him or going after specific people, it's to help remove uh, um, petty, like fence feuds between people that may be on the board or conflicts of interest or anything like that. So it would be those same people that do already the like, okay, you've, you've got a bunch of tires in your front lawn, you got to deal with this, it's a mosquito problem. Same would be same group of people, it would just be an additional thing that we're, we're authorizing them to, to actually kind of enforce. Do we know what the fees are for that inspection? We have to set it. And in fairness, we need to get a, a good barometer on how much the inspection actually would cost. Because we don't want to say it's going to be 50 bucks to have an inspection only to find out that, yeah, it's actually 100 bucks. And the way this would work is it's once every two years that it has to be inspected. So let's just, let's hypothetically say that it's, uh, for the ease of math, let's say it's $240. Um, you'd pay 10 bucks a month as, as a landlord to make sure that when you're inspection comes due, you've already paid for it over the course of the two years. And so, if you are not up to inspection and they come back and re-inspect, that would have $240. Potentially, yeah. And again, we need to we need to set the fee schedule. We're we're looking, we're not we're not to the point of being able to adopt this yet. Just so for, for your understanding and everybody else's, this is something we have interest in, but we want to make sure that it's tailored and is appropriate. So we want to make sure that if Kraft says, yeah, it's a hundred dollars for the inspection, that we then are able to say, okay, second inspection, is it the same amount? Is it slightly less because you're only going in and looking at one specific thing? It's less time, less effort. Um, is it a situation where there's, in the case of like, maybe you have to go back a third time because it's not right. Is it the same cost? Is it different? If there are things that you have to do for like the third infraction is uh, you get cited in like district court. Are there things that have to happen with the paperwork that added the time? There's a lot, there's still some discovery that we have to do to try to appropriately set that so that the township isn't picking up the bill. And then my other concern is <clears throat> as the owner of a rental property, are the expectations of how that property should be maintained the same as a person who just owns a property? So let me, let me actually clarify that. I think this will help, help you understand it. The IPMC is whether it's a rental property or a home. It's that, and that's the, the external thing. You don't have tires. You don't have junk that's breeding rodents. You don't have like your weeds are six feet high, that sort of deal. That's, that's universal. That's across the board with very few exceptions. Um, the rental ordinance is largely, honestly speaking here, safety stuff. And we can give you a copy of this if you'd like to read it over. Um, it's, they go through Can and they I make, interject? so we have a rental, we own Dave's parents' house and we rent it. Wilma Surf Borough has a rental inspection ordinance. Okay. We pay a yearly fee, but it's inspected every other year. Okay. Your craft codes does theirs. 
they come in and it's all safety stuff. It's to make sure they have the fire, uh, the smoke detectors well, the, and the uh, GFIs near the, the uh, like the any, any water sources. In your kitchen, there's one in your bathroom um, to make sure the smoke detectors work, to make sure you have enough smoke, enough smoke detectors in the house, to make sure the faucets don't leak, um, to make Mold, sure the like washer's connected correctly. It's all basically safety issues, but it's more items than what so, so you, you as a homeowner wouldn't have anybody inspect this. That's really the only difference is you technically probably should by safety and code standards meet those requirements. Anyway, there's just nobody actively policing that because it's you and your property. That's what I'll, 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 I'll kind of maybe put into the bucket of like what's considered the, the personal freedom aspect of it. But when you're, you're doing this as a business, when you're making profit off of somebody else living in your property, that's where we have to put that check and balance to make sure you're essentially not slumlording it. Um, exactly. and, and again, it's not like they're going to go in and be like, mm, your, your walls are the wrong shade of fuchsia. Mm -hmm. You need to paint mm -hmm. them. It's, it's like, okay, I your mean, toilet isn't leaking. There's not mold. The is 35 years old. Um, and because there were no breaks in the linoleum or anything, it's, it's fine. Rental wise. Now I would personally change it because it's old, <laughs> but you know, as long as it's safe, they didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. And like I said, if you'd like to see really what that is, I'm, I'm, it might help to read it, but it, it really truly is safety things. Craft Code's website, they have a rental inspections checklist, checklist kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. I'd imagine like it's been a while since I looked at it, but I'd imagine it's like, you have to have at least one fire extinguisher somewhere. You have yeah, to have smoke detectors. Yeah. You have to have GFIs. If yeah. it's like within a certain space, like if it's within three feet of a sink or it's in your kitchen. Yeah. It's really, honestly, I think a lot of people hear rental inspection ordinance and they kind of panic. It's really basic safety things that if you were going to stay at a hotel or you were going to rent something out, you'd want to know going into it that like, okay, I'm not going to have to worry about electrocuting myself or no, there's not black mold hiding under the floor because the toilet's been leaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, they went in the basement and checked out the basement. The, the washer and dryer is not down there. It's upstairs. But they checked out the basement. Now, my mother-in-law had a room down there that she did her painting in her studio and and they said to us if that's ever used for a bedroom you need to make sure you have an egress window in that room so it's just mm -hmm. like safety issues yeah. really yeah yeah it's like i said i think a lot of people hear that and they panic because like oh but it, it really truly is just making sure that people that are doing property rental as a business right. are, are adhering to a certain standard of, of safety really nothing else mm -hmm. this whole thing started over property with mold and the lady was in the hospital for yeah. two weeks yeah. and when we said what can we do about it we were told basically you nothing. can't do anything because you don't have an yeah. ordinance that mm -hmm. covers it yeah. and much um, like the so ipm it's, it's yeah, unfortunate which... that we have to put an ordinance in for all rentals in order to make sure that the one in particular that is really, really yeah, bad and people are getting un sick. Unfortunately, you have to be fair. You, you can't single fair. people out. You have to be fair. Yeah. 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 And, and it's the same thing with the IPMC. Like vast majority of properties are in good shape. Yeah. A lot of people do a very good job of keeping up on that. And there, I mean, there's some little things here and there, but honestly, that's a fact of life. It's there to make sure that if there is a big problem, we're able to deal with it. Otherwise, without having the ordinance in it, if somebody complained or there was a health hazard or there was a risk, we would be absolutely powerless. There's people, nothing that we would be able to do. People to find a shower and a toilet no, somewhere. No, no, no. The, 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 the rental? No. Yeah. The property maintenance one? Yeah, that's been in, in place for probably, geez, three, maybe four years now. Yeah. Um, and there's there's only been a handful of letters that have gone out. And of the letters that have gone out, there's really only one outlier. Everybody else has okay. either completely remediated or what we've, the directive we've get, given to craft is work with people, be as lenient as you can. And in the case of, uh, I'll say the one out on this, this Forge Road um, was basically a yard sale. <laughs> they had oh, tons yeah. of stuff out on their lawn. They got a letter and there's still some stuff out there, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah. And that's, we got, that's why we got to continue to monitor, but they got a letter and they immediately started making positive change that if you drove by week over week, you go, okay, they're definitely doing stuff. There's stuff gone. They're cleaning. I can see they're working on it that we weren't invoking any of the penalties or fines for like, you have 30 days to do this. We're not being draconian about you have 30 days to do it. It's 
we want to make sure that you're you're driving towards the desired end state, getting it fixed. Getting it fixed is the the important thing. But in some situations, you have people that aren't doing anything or are actively letting it degrade, and then continuing to not do anything. We'll do that's it. We'll where we'll do it just to make us mad. Yeah, and that's that's where unfortunately we have to have something <laughs> in place as an ordinance. Otherwise, we have to just sit here and go. So. So other than that, like I said, look at that. Those are the things that when I read through it, that jumped out. Everything else is pretty crisp. Um, the only other thing is uh, the, the, it's under it's under the uh, section eleven definitions. Yeah. The definition of family. It just I don't know. I'm keep on reading it over and over again. Family shall be defined as a group of people related by blood. Uh, name, marriage, adoption, or other legally defined relationship. In addition, a group of no more than three unrelated, uh, three persons unrelated to the others by the same relationship, residing in collectively within one residential unit. I, I don't know. The only thing I would yeah. say is we'd have to cross-reference in this what family the term is being used for, because that may be a situation where rather than saying like, okay, if you have a, a a property where there's three people in college rooming together right. rather than spelling out family right. and this other thing right. they may just say okay family we're just going to call it family right. and then like so it, exactly if you have four or five let's say students living in a household yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i think that's and again i'd have to reread re yeah. it and cross reference to where it references family yeah. but i think that's largely around the size requirements of the building yeah. that if you have a family there it has to be of a minimum size you can't have a dining room under 80 square feet you can't okay. have a so it's just going back to yeah it would just be going back way. through and doing a highlight of everywhere that it calls out family because yeah. uh, having having written not this flavor of document but similar documents at work for process and procedure you don't want to have to spell out like six definitions every single time if there's a uniform group of it's these six things every single time you define them as a term and then in your appendices you, you say okay this is the following things anytime you see group a it's this 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 and this okay. always so double check it yeah but that's probably less around family as a definition like what you might think of and family yeah. more as being able to say these are the requirements if you have a family unit which is a minimum that's of these number of people one that we received is pretty comprehensive it just oh yeah it, like i said just my, minor tweaks, tweaks. Yeah. those those are the things that as i read through it those are the things that jumped out at me as as terms of being uh, we want to check the sizes to make sure we aren't putting ourselves much like the zoning in a state of like perpetual non-compliance yeah um the possibly regressive penalties to occupants yep and uh the whole imprisonment thing if we want to revisit that or, or tailor that um but i agree with you i don't want to put anyone in prison yeah, I, yeah. so i'm just thinking so the family thing does that also pertain to like if you have 25 people living in a house this big that's a fire hazard yeah, it is and yeah. that, yeah. there's there's limiting yeah. things on that in there in terms of what sizes can be used for yeah. certain things. I'd actually, I'd have to see if they, I don't know if they put a top end on that, I didn't read but that. Uh, occupancy, occupancy limitations, dwelling units shall not be occupied by more occupants than permitted by the following minimum area, area requirements as applicable, where there okay. are three to five occupants occupying a dwelling, the living room area shall be a minimum of whatever, okay. um, where there are six or more occupants, it shall be set at a minimum of, uh, I think it's 150 square feet, but it does actually go well, through there. Um, and you know, it is says, that, is that related to fire hazard too? Maybe well, I'm sure there's, yeah. I'm sure there's probably something related to that, but that actually does. And that's the, the space requirements as it relates to like family sizes. That's where that comes from. And I believe there is actually the following minimum of each bedroom. It doesn't actually say where there are six or more occupants occupying a dwelling. That might be something that we want to look at saying like you cannot exceed a certain level of occupancy of like one person per t like gross X amount of gross square footage. So if you have a like, let's again, just for the ease of math, let's say you have a, a, a thousand square foot home, you can't have more than 10 people mm -hmm. because the limitation is uh, one person per 100, 100 square foot mm -hmm. of gross space. Like there might be a, a, a benefit to snapping that in there because I didn't see that mm -hmm. anywhere. Um, do you want me to ask one more store for their? Oh yeah, so if we can get a copy of theirs, that'd be great. I'd love to compare the two. I mean, I don't know of any other municipalities around here who have it. But yeah, I mean, again, this is largely I an exercise. Look on their website; they don't have the one. Yeah, see so if we can get one because this is really an exercise of we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, so exactly. if there's something that we read through and go like, oh, great, that's that's yeah. perfect. That makes great sense. Or like like you pointed that out, 
I probably wouldn't have, have skimmed through and picked that up, but that's a very valid point that you don't want to define like, yeah, it's this, these are the rules that each room has to have a minimum for six or more. There's really nothing stopping you then saying like, oh, we're going to cram 25 people in here. Yeah. So. so minimum space. Minimum person. space like per person. Cause then you, yeah. you'd say like, yeah, if you have a thousand square foot and let's say it's, you have to have 200 square foot gross occupancy space per person, you're allowed five people in that, that house as a maximum. Um, something like that. We just need to, again, tailor this a little bit to, to what some of our concerns or, or thoughts are. Cause again, you don't know what you don't know. When Richland did this, they may not have even thought about that. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Very good point. Sue. thank yeah, you. Thank you. Um, if we don't, do we have anything else that we need to touch on on that one? Okay. I'll keep moving. Uh, next one is the Western Berks joint zoning ordinance amendments, uh, for Robazonia borough to designate convenience stores with fuel pumps as a separate distinct use within town center, highway, commercial, general industrial and light industrial zoning districts. This will also provide use specific regulations, including parking, vehicular circulation around the pumps, placement of ventilation, uh, setbacks for fuel pumps, maximum number of pumps, et cetera. The convenience stores and fuel pumps must be owned and operated by the same entity and no repairs may be conducted on site. Our planning commission recommends that the board of supervisors accept the amendment conditioned upon resolution of the Berks County planning commissions. Um, for or excuse me, North Heidelberg apartments in the medium density residential district in, uh, in no, therein in have a minimum average lot area of 7,500 square foot. We have not gotten any comments back from the Berks County Planning Commission. However, our planning commission recommends that the Board of Supervisors accept the amendment conditioned upon the resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission comments. Um, Just in case they do oh, come back. Yeah. Uh, like they again, did with the Robazonia one. Yeah. That way we're covered and we don't have to have a planning commission. Yeah, we're, we're not under a rush for this. And uh, the the gas pump one is around the the potential, I believe, the potential Wawa property on 422. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and for everybody's understanding, the zoning uh, doesn't really account for the fact that most convenience stores anymore also sell gas. That has been a common fact of life for more than like a decade to a decade and a half. Zoning just hasn't followed suit on that. So the only places that are allowed gas pumps per R zoning, the group zoning, uh, would be service stations like mechanic shops which how often do you see gas pumps in a mechanic shop anymore mm -hmm. so this is really largely that first one is getting with the times in terms of what actual use is by by property definition so i don't personally have any objections to to either but we should have as as recommended we should wait until we get the and comments back we'll have the actual documents those yeah right. yeah so barring barring anything sneaky it's it's pretty straightforward mm -hmm. um Okay, next item on the agenda is the proposed budget for 2022. Uh, we will need to decide if we're having a special meeting. Uh, personally, I think I'd rather do the, the heavy lifting at the Saturday workshop meeting okay. and, ha and spare the, the, extra, the extra session and the advertising and everything that goes along with that. Uh, otherwise, if we did have a special meeting, we would have to advertise. Mm -hmm. uh, we would be discussing the budget and just um, really ideally, um, really heavily discussing it at the October board meeting. Uh, so that we would be able to finalize the budget, make a motion to accept and advertise the budget, have it available for public inspection, uh, as we have to advertise it for at least 20 days before the final budget is adopted. And we must, absolutely must adopt the budget before December 31st. I, I because because if, you don't, if we don't, whole, it's yeah, a whole yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it'd be a problem. What I'll yeah. do for Thursday's meeting, I'll send out an email. I'll show what our performance has been for this past year and uh, see where our needs are for so that we could have a brief conversation. Everyone could mull over the numbers. And then I, I honestly could think by October, November, we could say, yeah, yeah this is where we need to be at. And that's yeah. so I, I think I'd, I'd like to make a decision forward. in October yeah. Yeah. so that we can sure advertise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't think it'll be a, yeah. a problem. So I'll, yeah. I'll circulate the 2021, the sheet that I used to, to crunch the numbers for the budget okay. and I'll, I'll update it because the way the way that I have that is I want to try to keep a rolling history like the the actual budget itself mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. but the the totals are, are added so that we're able to see year over year okay. and we can develop a trend we're able to oh, more absolutely. accurately forecast based on a three-year five-year like even once we have enough data there in assembled we'd be able to take 10 years and be able to say okay we've been trending downwards on this one thing or road work has been trending up Oh yeah. Roughly 20% yeah. annually. Yeah. Like we've been able, we'd be able to make more informed decisions because of having more data points. Um,
but I'll, I'll send that out because yeah, that's I'll, really what I'm going to use based on what you send yeah, for I'll, the reports. Yeah, I'll see. I'll see what I could pull up. See if I could actually do that. But the problem is that it hadn't been entered it hadn't into been entered. the program previously, so we're really starting with this year's. Uh, we have. Yeah. I think we have 20, I think my sheet has 2019 and 2020 on it. We yeah. have 2021 because that's what yeah. we set this past but year. So we'd have three. 2019 wasn't entered. But no, no, no. But yeah. I mean, I have yeah. the figures. Have, I have yeah. the figures. They're just not in QuickBooks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll send that out to everyone so everyone understands like where we needed more money because soon I know we needed office supplies, the printer, the snap, we still, the copier still hasn't been addressed. Um, yeah. Copy yeah. yeah. The, you know, the, the big yes. copier, yeah. I haven't find any, found anywhere. I think a lot of places, and like, again, I'll, I'll yeah. tentatively pin this on COVID, but a lot of places just weren't doing their usual obsolescence cycles yeah. for equipment yeah. because there was no need. There was nobody in yeah. the offices using it. Why replace it if it's not being used? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I just had a thought should I try to look on the Co Stars? Website. I mean, it's, it's worth the thought Look The list, yeah. even, even at a discount list price on yeah. new multifunction devices, they're expensive. They're like three yeah. to $5,000 a piece. Um, yeah. so absolutely. Look, we maybe yeah. get, we'll get lucky, but I, I think, think getting, kind of yeah, website, yeah getting one off lease yeah. though, would probably yeah. be the, the, the best way. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you want me to call? Yeah. What, what was I, yeah. SOS. SOS. Yeah. Yeah. This, I yeah. Was yeah. Out, yeah. It, it, absolutely. Make our usual phone calls. Yeah. Of a I mean, as, people just to get numbers. As long as we're not yeah. committing to buying anything, yeah. you can call whoever yeah. you like. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll go from there, but I know yeah. it's usually for small offices and like places like ourselves, yeah. buying a unit outright is usually an impossible co a cost yeah. figure because of yeah. just how much it is. So, I'm going to be pretty detailed with the categories. Like I'm going to go through all of our, our categories and break it down. Like, mm -hmm. over oh, well, this is what we spent and this is what should be proposed. And then, so, because that's the way the system does it. Do you mind getting things in Excel? I love getting things in Excel. getting things in Excel, Jim? Mm -hmm. I hate Excel. I love so spreadsheets. I'll, uh, I'll send it out in Excel then. And then this way you could alter it as needed. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a computer person. I've been forced to use the computer though. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good with it. You're good. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll talk, oh, okay. we'll talk more on budget and send some stuff out. Like I, I said, I'll, once I have the, the figures, I'll start trying to assemble the, the 2022 yeah. forecast and then we'll go from there. I don't think it'll be a I, problem. I don't foresee a need to raise taxes. I always try to avoid that. And we've done a very good job of that over the, the number of years that I've been on the board. Yeah. Um, I don't foresee a situation where we would come down from two mills. No. Simply because we're like, we're already like, we have a very lean budget to begin with. We'd have to, we'd really have to cut something hard. Yeah. Um, simply because the difference between like two and 2.1 is like $10,000. Yeah. Um, $10,000 so is $10,000. Is it is. Us, it is. But if you know? going down, it's basically world ending going yeah. up. It takes it. Yeah. It takes barely a dent out of yeah. something because, like, look at the Colbert projects. Yeah, that's one tenth of one Colbert project. Yeah. It's not worth raising the money to try to finance that organically. No. So. All right, I'll get numbers out Wednesday then because I'm off. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of of money, the next item on the agenda is the update to the saldo fees and stormwater management ordinance and fees. Uh, the subdivision and land development ordinance is from 1991. The fees are from 2005, so they're more than a little outdated. Yeah. Stormwater management ordinance and fees are both from 2002. McCarthy Engineering has sent us a copy of Why Missing's fee schedule, which uh, we should look over and... Yeah. I, uh, I, I took a brief look at it. I felt overwhelmed. So I clicked out of it. Like the first yeah. page, and I was I like, can't, I can't. Oh my gosh, yeah. right it's, today. <laughs> so, so that's something we have to pull up all our numbers because there's numbers in there. I'm like, I didn't even know we could charge for this. So. Yeah. But it's something that we have to do because as we found out, we were eating. We eating were incurring cost costs that we shouldn't of, have. Right. And I can also say it's been a positive. Um, if I could bring it up here. So some engineering costs we weren't billing our residents for now that we are. We are now. So... <sighs> There's one resident who has not paid any of those fees. There is one pending permit that they haven't come in to pick up because they haven't, well, I don't know why they haven't come in to pick it up, but they owe us about $1,200. So what's the next step that are we, we take? are we, and this is a more of a question yeah. from McCarthy yeah. and Kraft. Are we allowed to withhold future permits until you have paid? We have to ask yeah. the, the um, As I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that you can, that we okay. can put a moratorium on a permit. Right based on uh, either non-completion of a prior permit or 
Well, I mean, if you let a permit expire, like, right. yeah. but if you haven't closed it out, like they've given you the, 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 um, the permit, uh, the, per the, permit of, the permit of occupancy right. and like you haven't paid if you're not no he's not even coming to pick it up and pay the well, no no no. but i'm just yeah. saying like oh, if he has a, oh, if okay. he has applied for it okay. we would potentially say like we're not giving you this like even though it's been right. approved we're not giving you this until you settle out the other ones that you have right. open like yes you've had it done craft may have given you the permit of occupancy or whatever that went along with that we will not give you another one until you close the book on it right so we could send out, let's say, letter number one, letter number two, six percent increase, letter number three, six percent increase. I'm okay with one, two, and three. I'm not okay with number four. We and should so, we should move into right, enforcement right, actions. Right. On so, four. so so what so do we I have want a question? To? Can we put on maybe letter number two? Call the office to set up a payment plan. Right. And yeah. So we have to yeah. decide on what the structure is for a payment plan. And then mm -hmm. again, like if now we're at point letter number three, you haven't contacted us, you haven't set up a payment plan, you've uh, incurred these extra costs, are so we going to go to collections? We probably should or take okay. it to court. Um, okay. With the payment plan thing, we need to be, uh, I'm not opposed to it for the record, right. but we need to be careful about that because to me, there should be a very heavy distinction between residents mm -hmm. and uh, I'll, uh, at the risk of picking on Stonecroft, like a building association mm -hmm. like Stonecroft. The two should be handled very distinctly, very differently, because okay. your cash flow as a person is going to be very different than your cash flow as a business. Um, again, you're also then doing something for yourself rather than doing something for profit. Additionally, we want to make sure that this is not something that is invoked constantly because we don't want to be in debt collection business. Right. We don't want to have everybody go, well, I'm getting a thousand dollars worth of like, I'm, I'm going to put a deck on. It's going to be a thousand dollars. I don't want to have to pay the township all at once. I'll just get on a payment plan and give them 20 bucks a, a month for the next whatever number of months. We want to avoid the unintended consequence right. of ben, ben, essentially being rent to own on your right. permits. Right. So, no, no, no. This is no. not a no. permit fee. No, no, no. no. But it's the other fees. But I'm saying if people owe us money, I'm all for okay. giving people okay. uh, an out that if they're like, I, I had, I, I lost my job, I can't pay this. Like we want to, we want to give a mechanism there, but we don't yeah. want to have it abused, and that's right. a very difficult thing to do, and we need to figure out how to do it. Could you could you put that on the agenda so that it's something that is addressed with Courtney how to address what do you mean? Uh, payment payment plan how to avoid abuse and collection plan of what of, of per, like fees unpaid fees. unpaid fees specify fees like engineering fees and attorneys fees yeah so we'll we'll get into the weeds on the actual discussion but yeah. the bottom line is like again because that, as it stands now if a permit if i call somebody and say hey your permit's here it's approved this is how much you owe mm -hmm. if they come in to sign it they don't give me a check i don't give them their permit right? yeah well i know i know right. but right. there there are other fees other than the permit right. fee. i know but that's yeah. why i wanted you to clarify right. that. yeah 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 so that's I'll, I'll call that one out of scope because that's a requisite if you don't hand us the check for your your permit fee we don't hand you the permit but there are right. other things downstream of that that have to still be collected in one right. Shape, right. way shape or so, form so we okay. sent out billings now for about five thousand dollars worth and we've collected i think about half of that already mm. and that's just with one letter i mean again that's a significant amount of cost that we were paying yeah and so yeah. I, I, and, and in fairness yeah. to people i think right. this is not something that had been really well communicated or right. communicated at all most people or if there's a cost that they go, okay well this was a part of my project i remember this right. being a thing i just right. didn't get the bill yet they're going to pay it you right. have some people that are just going to go yeah let's see what they do crumple up the letter and and right. try and avoid it but we need to make sure that we're we're able to effectively go after it much in the same way the rental thing if there is an issue we have to be able to effectively right. targetedly specifically address it but we have to make sure that it's not regressive in nature, that there's not an unintended consequence either to the person that it's impacting or to us trying to uh, essentially police it. Right. Um, well, I'd, I'd accept the $10 a month. I'd accept the $20 a month. Something's better than nothing. Something's better than nothing. But right. like I said, I don't right. want to see us every single person. If that's a thing that is structurally built in, they're going to go, why would I pay everything right. at once when I can just pay you 10 bucks a month right. for the rest of the time? But, but but I can do that, and I can do that with the program. And well, I know, you know, I know. It, it, well, it does, it does functionally, cover, it's there. Yeah. We just want yeah. to make sure that it's not being. It, it's an exception, it's not, not the rule. Right. That's that's the point that I'm trying to make. Yeah. Well, and yeah. and like I hadn't yeah. hadn't really gotten down the rabbit hole in that discussion right. yet. But to me, it once we establish how to control that effectively, it should be tiered to two separate categories. If you're a homeowner, it's this. Right. If your project is of this amount. We're, we're, we'll allow you to do a payment plan up to a certain amount of months, the deadline. Mm -hmm. um, like, you don't, what was that? 
Oh, no, no. Right, well, that's right. just what I said. We don't, we do not want to be in the business of debt collection. Right. We want to have something that, like I said, things happen. We don't right. want to be, we don't want to be so draconian that we're going to take you to court over like, yeah, you put a deck in a year ago and you didn't pay, but you've lost your job. You may not have money. Like we want to be cognizant of, of people's lives, but right. we also want to make sure that the people don't just crumple up the letter and go like, I'm not paying the fees. Get out of here. What are you going to do? Right. Right. Um, well, now so, this, this particular person owes the township well over $1,200. Yeah. yeah. So it's again, much yeah. like the the rental thing we need to look at it yeah. and really uh, i'll use the the idiom kick the tires on it but look at it and make sure that we're not putting ourselves into a situation where we're either being overly harsh or taking away powers that we absolutely need because again just to reiterate we're not a bank we don't right. want to be in the debt collection business we don't want to be taking people to court constantly but we need to put the tools in our toolbox that we are able to either help people or enforce if people are non-compliant <laughs> And it's, it's, it's a delicate balancing act, but it's one that, that it is our direct responsibility as the board to figure out. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, as far as the fees go, do you have our current fees like in one area or like they're kind of- Current fees for what? There all, are a lot of different fees. All, all, <laughs> all stuff that was in Jim's email. It's, uh -huh. it's, okay. It's, okay. It's, so it's, Irene, I'll, there's I'll, I'll, I'll go some of it. This. Yeah, some yeah, of it, some of it. Thing? Yeah. Our fee schedules are, are in various places. So like, I know okay. for a fact, the Saldo one is, is in its own place. Okay. The uh, stormwater one is in its own place. We don't have a cut sheet of every single fee. No. Okay. Um, so maybe we could work on We could work on that. So we have, mm -hmm. see the fees are set by resolution. So the fee isn't, fees are not part of the ordinance. The yeah. fees are set by resolution. Okay. And we don't have the okay. data keeping. And this so is, if you don't want to change anything in the Saldo ordinance, you don't have to. Right. You can change the fees by resolution. Okay. <clears throat> but so, to, to Irene's point, we yeah. don't just have a consolidated list of like, here's all the fees, here's no. the saldo. So, okay. I mean, that's something we can get together, but that's it does not that, historically right. exist. That's something that I think we should do to move forward so that down the road, when we need to change fees, we know we have one reference point of these are all of our fees and this is where we're at and this is what we need to upgrade and change. Well, apparently Jim McCarthy pointed out we should be having fees for other stuff too, so. Yeah. We just want to make sure that yeah, we want to make sure we're covered we're yeah. on that. It's okay. We're not charging you ten dollars, and McCarthy's charging us twenty. And right. prime example is we want to make sure that we have things record kept and consolidated so that it's easy to access. But we'll have things like the okay. uh, the the on lot management ordinance, the pump outs, um, the inspections, things like that. That's that's also in its own right. separate thing. And so if we I'm adopt just, the rental property I'm ordinance. So the we won't do it this week, that's for yeah. sure. No, wait. No, the, I have them stored in my computer. Yeah. That's okay. That's it's just that right. our fees don't cover our costs. Yeah, right. and that's, right. that's what and we that's need to... Problem. We, yeah. right. we need to make sure that the fees that we do have are adjusted because they're yeah. wildly outdated, right. but there I are apparently... the saldo and the stormwater fees. Whenever I understand it. Yeah. So, I <laughs> that and then I'll create the database to the fees okay. and stuff like that. We'll reference Jim's recommendations. We'll go over mm. it and we'll revise things as needed by resolution. Okay. And so then I will start the database for all these fees. So down the road when we need, we need to reference them or anyone else in the future needs to reference them. It's there. It's, it's clear and, and we can move uh, forward. And honestly speaking, yeah. like we're not there yet. This is a yeah. down the road thing. Once we have everything in and we've actually updated to come current because a lot of these yep. are basically 20 years outdated. Yep. Yep. Um, that should, around budget time, that should be one of the annual exercises is to revisit these Oh, schedules. absolutely. I agree. That's an excellent idea. So, so just, do you mind if I hang a sign in the office that says something to the effect, if your project needs stormwater management and review by our engineer, you will be billed at a later date, something like that. Yeah, yes. I don't have any objections yes. to that. And we include that because we include that in the letters too. This may not include all yeah, the but I don't tell them project. that. Yep. So yeah. if yeah. we have well, obviously in the permit application, can it's we maybe? I was going to say, can we add yep. wording in there that well, this? Crafting McCarthy's permitting application is going to have that in. It. So we and need to have them. Yeah, we need to have an additional. Well, I mean, they're they'll yeah. tailor. Like yeah. Kraft has a general one, but Kraft also has specific applications for like Chillington has their own, Wombelsdorf has their own. No, um, they, everybody uses the same. I, mm. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that the one that's on the website isn't the same because a friend of mine lives in Chillington and he did something and his form was different than the one that we have. 
Well, you can click on the uh, I know. municipality. Well, I, I know, but I'm saying like having, having having seen one in the flesh, okay. it was different than the one that was on the website. Okay. So uh, right. with that said, even if it's an extra sheet of paper, like just we'll, we'll go the, the, the really crude but solution. Everybody young yeah. comes in here for them. They get them off the website. Yeah. yeah. Or a follow-up email or something or a letter mailed out that like, thank you for applying for a permit please be aware that there may be other fees in addition to your permit. Like we'll have to figure out the nuts and bolts of it as we go through this, yeah, but you can just, you can just tell them that whenever they, when you hand them the permit, just tell yeah. them that yeah. there may be additional fees based yeah. on engineering. Yeah. We want to, we want to put a control in place that isn't yeah. like, we don't want to burden you with having to do that. We, yeah. Automation is better. So if it's a situation where like somebody gets a permit and they get a follow-up email or they get a letter or it's just put directly on the permit application that takes some of the yeah. burden off of Sue. Yeah. So that, and, yeah, and nothing, yeah, nothing against. I never know when McCarthy's going to do stormwater review. Right? Exactly, and, right. and until after and the fact. No, nothing against you. This is not a judgment yeah. thing, but we want to try to remove the human element from everything we possibly can because That's myself true. included, human error happens. Yeah. So the less hands that we have on a process, the more automated it is, the less likely you are for error. So. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and every yes, one of these there. fees that we that right. we've uh, right. been sending, we send them a copy of the engineering. Yeah. A bill. Yeah. Right. So everything's attached. Yeah. So yeah. I would say not for not for Thursday night's meeting. Don't yeah. don't rush on that no. one. But yeah. for maybe for like next month's workshop meeting, if we can have some of the the stuff in place and do a side by side, because I'm sure there's like one McCarthy things. There's plenty of fees that we aren't even charging people that we could. Yeah, I didn't recognize so. some of that stuff. So I've got no. a whole pile of stuff that McCarthy sent us over, and we have to check with Courtney how far back we could go for billing yeah so so that's that's going to be a work in progress but that's yeah. that's something that now that it's yeah. been aired out we'll yeah. we'll get we'll get closure on it and then we'll get into the right posture yeah. of doing yeah. it annually yeah so now it's coming up on the end of the year no it's yeah. okay oh, no. and that's very yeah. busy for me oh well budget oh, time's no, busy and all the forms it. and stuff that we have to submit like all again completely and completely get it so it's something that we need to keep working at yeah. but it's not like oh god we have to do it right now yeah so Okay, last item on the agenda is the Act 537. Our next step is to get the income study done. We need to send the letter out to property owners about pump out inspection and things like that. So the letter that we had written previously, we'll need to do a little rework on and tailoring. Um, Alan had given us some suggestions. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, get some time this week. I'll poke at it, recirculate it. I'd like you guys to do the same, poke at it, and we'll, we'll get it to the point where we're, we're comfortable with sending out the notice about the pump outs. Okay, can I make a suggestion? Absolutely, please do so. That for now, all we send out is a letter about the pump outs because some of the information you had on your little newsletter kind of letter yeah. is old information. Okay. I mean, I, it's, it might, it's like old news. It might be good. And maybe we, we, but we need to get that the pump. Out. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, but I mean, out. maybe it's a situation because it's like three pages or, or so. Maybe we cut it down a little bit just as a gen consolidate exactly so that the, the second page is still the pump out thing, but the first page is just some of the stuff general FYI that's going on. You know, you can still join this, the meetings on Zoom if you're at home, but we are resuming to have them in person. We're part of the joint zoning thing that doesn't really change much from a day to day, but gives better, you know, some of the some of the color commentary there and about that. Keep that essentially as a cover sheet and then have the the pump out letter as the the yeah. real core content on the well, back. You know, you, I will give you. My oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I always no, welcome I it. I love you. I love you. you so you, you write like like. I, I mean, like actually, that's, that's actually that's a fair yeah. point. That's a fair point, <laughs> yeah. Kelly. So if there's upcoming events, because I know you guys like somebody, Don. I think it was you that reached out about like doing a movie night on the, the playground. If there are things that you want to include in that letter before we send it out, please send it. Um, okay, but it has to be this it, week. This letter yeah, must yes. get right. out. Yeah, right. this, it must get out. Oh, so yeah. okay, May fourteenth. Yeah. I mean, and we can't drag this out for another month. Yeah. It's yeah. got to be yeah. done. Yep. Well, yep. So John wants it to be included as um, the EMC. You know, he wanted to like introduce himself. Like, okay, I am put your, that on your okay. Part. Okay. So okay. Letter. <laughs> <Partial> yeah. <laughs> we need to send out like a <laughs> biannual. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm not opposed to it, but okay. it's a lot of work to send with, like to get a newsletter together. Uh, um, uh, sure. The, the charge uh, that you are going to charge for pump out, is that mm -hmm. going to be on the tax thing or? I don't An, think so. so initially, probably yeah. not. However, that is something that in future times we could put on the tax bill. And I'm actually in favor yeah. of doing that. That way, 
be, uh, I think we missed the deadline for it for this this upcoming yeah. year. Well, we didn't get the paper yet from the county that we have to fill out that you were just named as okay. the contact okay. person. Okay. So, um, and I'll help you do that because I always did the paper yeah. so, because no one else volunteered to be on yeah. the paper. But I think it's getting a little late <laughs> yeah. to make the decision. So this if year. if we can do it for next year, because I missed out, I missed that. I apologize. Yeah. But if we can do it for next year, we will. The goal is to get it on the first year that we possibly can with the like the complete list of what houses because we don't want to we don't want to have a clerical error where like the Stonecroft people that are on public sewer get a bill for like, why am I getting charged $15 a month for an online management fee? And I have a sewer. We want to make sure that we're crisp there. And then there's a benefit to having on the tax bill. It's a, it's it, yeah, it's, it's not a separate thing that you have to worry about. It's just, it becomes. Well, uh, the thing of it is you're going to have people that aren't going to pay that. Oh, I know. I know. And we want to, again, we want to but make sure the tax bill, bill, they have to pay it. Yeah. yeah. They have to pay it if it's on the tax yeah. bill, which again, shifts the, the liability and risk off of us, mm -hmm. off of the SEO mm -hmm. onto you, because if you don't pay your tax bill, you've got bigger problems to deal yeah. with than us. And um, that's not our collection problem. Precisely, yeah. precisely. So that's, that's kind of where we're at with that, but we need to get the, the word out there that this is the thing that you're going to have to start doing. And again, just being purely honest here, myself included, I, I fully anticipate that when it gets inspected, you're probably gonna have to do something, whether it's cleaning or replacing a baffle or, or whatever. We need to make sure people are aware that the inspection is a requirement, a lot of people are, how to go about getting the inspection set up along with their pumper, but then also to kind of not necessarily tell people you're gonna have to do this, but to set the expectation that a lot of people have old systems. You have to maintain things, whether it's a car or a building or whatever, you may find yourself that there are additional costs on top of the, the inspection fee because there's ongoing maintenance that you have to perform on this. So we'll, we'll get that buttoned up. I think Alan only had a couple of, like, and I took notes when he was talking to us, a couple of little adjustments. There may be some wording that we want to change, update some dates, update some timeframes. Um, otherwise, the, the core content of it is still good. The map, the drawing is good. It's easy to understand based on like, okay, I'm roughly here. I know I'm in zone number two or like I'm here. I'm in zone number one. Um, all of that's in place. It's just retailing the, the, the cover letter, the introduction of, you know, hey, there's a lot of stuff going on in Marion Township. Uh, you know, meetings were remote because of COVID. We've started doing it in person. However, if you still want to join remotely, you can. Here's the, the information. Um, Marion Community Association is doing a car show. We have a new EMC who's working on helping address things like the flooding that we just had recently. Like just kind of giving people a little bit of little bit of information and then giving them the the big part of it, which is the on lot uh, management ordinance. So well, I'm just thinking, like, if you would want to put it on next year's tax bill, we need to know two things before we do that. We need, need to, to have a record that fee very soon. We need okay. to make sure the fee schedule is up to date and we're not taking a loss with Alan. And we need to make sure well, that he the, already told us. His well, I, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we're we're adjusted by resolution on that, and we need to make sure that uh, the property list is one hundred percent accurate, which is going to be making a list, checking it, checking it again, checking it a third well, I, time. I gave and, my list to him. Yeah, and I marked the Stonecroft people, mm. the Dutch Valley. Yep. Um, there's, a, there's a few other properties that I knew that are just lots, yeah, like lots, yep. something. Um, but he told me in an email that they check with the county. Okay. Good, check good, 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 good. And that's because well, we just got a transfer list. Yeah. So I emailed it to him saying, How do you want me to handle this? Do you want me to just email you this list, forward this list, mm -hmm. or do you want me to update my lit, my yeah. tax list or what? And he said, just keep forwarding that list and they do check things with the county. So and I have everything in the file room anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that's we'll, we'll work on that this okay. week. That should be a relatively short exercise. The the hard aspect of it is done. There was just a little bit of uncertainty around some of the other aspects of it, especially as it related to the, the DEP component and then the switch in SEOs. But I think we've gotten, we, we, we now know where the DEP stands pretty definitively. And we now know what Alan needs and what Alan's stuff is going to actually translate to in terms of time. And if there's like, like we had talked about before, if there's a, a follow-up visit, what that's going to entail in terms of fees, that we're, we're able to hone the letter to exactly where it needs to be relatively easily. So we'll circulate copies amongst ourselves in terms of deciding what, what is the final finished product, and then we'll get that mailed out. Mm -hmm. 
because it's going to take me a few days to get that mail back. And that's and that's the situation when it's, it's done. Don't exactly don't take that all on your own. That's I can yeah, it, it'll yeah, it'll yeah, probably yeah. be I'm late, but here. that's the situation yeah. where I could maybe come in yeah. after like nine o'clock or something like that and start. Yeah, you you have it sorted. I've got a teenager. He can put things. Yeah, we can we can try for do the, the the envelope yeah. fold and then stamp and, and you can um do a mail merge do the spreadsheet yeah. into labels yeah i can i can make that happen because i haven't done that for such a long yeah, time mail merges are a pain but i i can do it that's that's, that's not hard yeah about, so. so you yeah. can take you can take a, uh, yeah. i won't beat on this because we're getting close to yeah. noon but yeah. okay. you can take a, an excel spreadsheet or a, a list of like comma separated names and word and you can go i need to send out letters and it will go okay first name Put it onto a letter, print it out. Second name, put it onto a letter. It, it's it's awesome. what's called a mail merge. Just make sure you have the mailing address, address. Not the property address. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I can I can take care of the technical nuts and bolts. I can okay. come in late and help you okay. fold things or put them in letters or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But we'll get it we'll, done. We'll work as a team. It's not going to be all yeah. on you, Sue. Okay. Excellent. Okay, that's the last formal item on the agenda. Uh, in terms of supervisors' comments, uh, I touched on this earlier. I'm trying to find a place that will rent what's called a rumble hog grinder, which will cut rumble strips into the road. Um, seeing as it is our road, it's not like a, a state road or anything like that, uh, and there are no prohibitions, restrictions, or requirements on putting them in, we can pretty much do whatever we want. Okay. So I'm and thinking. You have signage that says rumble strips ahead. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. We, we can. Um, but we can put a couple, we can put a bunch, we can put them at other intervals if we think that people are going to pick up speed again as soon as they pass the first rumble strip, whatever the situation yeah. is the the hard part is finding that piece of equipment it's a pretty specialized piece of equipment that apparently not many rental places have i don't know that many other municipal excuse me municipalities have even it's really something that like pendot has because of having okay. to do them on highways so i'm trying to find somewhere where we can get our hands on one of those and then either look to hire somebody or look to have our road crew do it depending on how complex the piece of equipment is but uh go from there the other one Go ahead. Did you check with the Stony Creek right now? I, I did actually. They don't they didn't have anything like that. Um and again, like I said, it's a pretty niche piece of equipment that like most places aren't gonna aren't gonna do it. You don't have local municipalities cutting stuff in. I'm gonna call some paving places because every once in a while you may see like parking lots that have them. So I might get lucky there, but it would be a situation where we'd have to hire somebody to come out and do it rather than like having you and Kevin do it. Oh, I, 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, or specifically, um, oh, the name is escaping me. The, the company that we had to do the um, Martin Martin Paving. They, yeah. I'm going to call them at some yeah, point and see awesome. if they they yeah. have it because it, I've I've been really coming up dry on finding some place to rent it and and do it ourselves. Um, the other thing is I reached out to MSI where we get our signs about the uh, pedestrian bollards, the the yellow things mm -hmm. that say like pedestrian crossing or like caution pedestrians mm -hmm. or stop for pedestrians or whatever. Um, they're the, the good ones, the decent ones that are going to last are about $300 a piece. Okay. Um, I'd like to look at, and I'll, I'll bring some pictures of what they are for Thursday night's meetings, but I'd, I'd like to consider getting three of them. Um, one for each intersection on main street, because that coupled with the outside lines, um, the rumble strips and potentially a stop sign at the intersections. Uh, I'm thinking that will, will, will cover a lot of different aspects of what will help reduce speeding. Um, another aspect like we talked about earlier would be having the speed sign out there, but if we can change the traffic behavior on the road, mm -hmm. we'll probably see enough benefit from those things that we may not even have to have the speed sign out there that we could put the speed sign elsewhere. Um, and I think that's really, those are the, those are the principal things that I had. I've already talked to Butch about a couple of the, the spots that I want him to do some remediation in terms of putting the riprap out for some of the, the road surfaces that are yeah, are easing. You want, you want the speed side, obviously, you know, because I have it in the back. Yeah, no, I got to I gotta, I gotta look at it. That's what we were talking about earlier is it had an electrical problem when Peter Wallace brought it in. And I'm, at this point, my, my electrical engineer senses are tingling in the sense that I don't think it's just a battery. We can replace the battery, but the concern is that we have a charging problem. It would be like changing the battery in your car. You might be able to make a couple of trips to the grocery store, but then it's going to be stone dead in short order. Um, well, like I said, you want, you want to get work done on it. You know how to get out Okay, I appreciate it, Bush. Um, so with that said, I don't think I have any other comments. Irene, do you have comments? I, I, I just have stuff from John, and I'm so sorry to prolong this meeting any any further. So, um, And I apologize, John's at work today, so... 
Uh, he wanted to let everyone know. I have two pages of stuff here. Sorry. Um, you can give me a copy of this then. What was that? Oh, I'll give it to you. you want, just so I. Oh, yeah. Because I'm not going to be able to write it. Oh, no, everything. Um, so he has his radio. It's in service. And unfortunately, he had to use it when uh, someone from American House went missing recently. And actually, he's used it for the storms. And it's been a huge plus as far as coordinating um, events when it comes to working with groups within the county. So that's been a big plus. According to his reports, there's about a dozen homes pumped out uh, from the flood from Hurricane um, Ida between Marion and Wormelsdorf. Please, again, anyone gets flooded, contact the office, um, have them call 911. They should be able to reach John in the event of a hurricane. And I guess this upcoming Saturday, we have another hurricane possibly coming, Hurricane Sam. So he's, he's going to be busy. I know Butch was out with him. I think, I think John got home at like 1 a.m. with the last storm. So, yeah. yeah. Um, several homes had significant damage up to four feet of water. All reports were completed and sent into Burke's EMA. He got a response from FEMA, and FEMA's actually coming to do an assessment of one of the homes that he sent a report on. They had in excess, I want to say, $15,000 damage. They also told him that this was quite unusual. They've never, or they in recent times, haven't received any information from Marion Township. Well, we haven't had any reported right, things. MC. So, yeah. So, so this is a plus on our part because John is out there and he's being active. Um, he did note that Marion Fire Company had only smaller pumps and they really weren't able to handle some of the larger pump outs. And that's why Wommelsdorf came in to do some of the larger pump outs. He, he's asking if the township can purchase a three inches, what's called a trash pump, at the cost of uh, $1,350.65 and a hose kit for an additional $307 from Eblings to donate to the fire departments. And what? Uh, okay. This, this, this is, I'm just reading what John was saying. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you could find better pricing. So yeah. he, he just went down to Eblings because Eblings was yeah. down the road. Yeah, we should, we should right. look around. But one of the things to consider yeah. is not, not all pumps are created equal. So right. there's, there's use right. cycles and. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so if you want to work with John on pricing, he'll be more than happy to do this. And he said this pump would have been able to handle um, more of the severe flooding. So I'm just reading what, what John wrote. Um, road closed signs are still being ignored, especially on Canal Road during the high water events. Motorists are now driving through the local homeowner's yards to get around the signage and cones. And, and there's been damage to people's property as a result of this. He spoke to both homeowners on either side of the culvert. And if hypothetically there'd be some kind of a gate placed when it would be high water and high flooding, mm -hmm. uh, that would be ideal. Um, these residents were welcomed the idea. And one resident actually volunteered his construction ability to install it because it is illegal to drive around road close signs in Pennsylvania. Well, again, well, it's, that's it's a difficult problem. to get. Right, like, you, right. you don't, you know, that somebody did it, but you don't necessarily know right. when or you know. right. So, because we yeah. don't have police officers sitting there saying, "Okay, you can't drive down this road." So, his biggest concern is now a vehicle being swept away, and their lives can potentially be lost. But now you're also sending rescuers in to attempt a rescue that shouldn't have happened in the first place, and now you have more people potentially can get harmed and and loss of life. So, he recommends a cattle style gate on either side of the road at the narrow point which would prevent any vehicles getting um, any access to the road with, again, a road close uh, with gate sign at either end. So this is something that has to be thought out. I don't know the ins and outs of it. We need to get pricing. Right. And as long pricing. as it's, if it's in the right of way, technically right. we wouldn't have to do anything right. in terms of like permissions or easements right. or anything uh, like that. Over in Shed, uh, across from here, uh, did you have some wooden trussels? Oh, people yeah, just move people them. just, people move just them. Out and right. move so, them. so, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's scary. I mean, the amount of water that's on Canal Road is just unreal. I mean, yeah. it just pours over, it pours into our back half of our fields. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's unreal. We go fishing after the storms to just scoop out trout out of these puddles. Mm. Yeah. Anyone wants <laughs> come on over to my house after these heavy rains. So yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it just, it's just, it's, it's unreal. And unfortunately it, it, it's not a matter of if, but when, so we're going to be seeing more and more severe weather, no matter what our wishes and hopes are. Um, this is, this is now more of like his kind of a wish list from here. He'd like to start creating containers that Marion Township residents can use for minor flooding in their homes. 
And his proposal is creating a, a tote with a sump pump in it. Um, uh, he has sp sp specific recommendations, 50 to 100 feet of GFCI protected extension cord with a 50 foot uh, garden hose. So the concept is residents would come in, they would sign a contract, take the tote, be able to take it to their home, use it in the event of flooding and return it. If they don't return it or they return it, it's broken, et cetera, they'd be responsible for the replacement cost. So um, this, this might be a situation where if somebody can't get here, if John's right, making right. rounds that we could drop one right. of these we, off we could drop and you could acknowledge off. that. Like it, think, uh, Kelly, I, the, the face you're making. <laughs> right. Um, if we're, we're already going out and helping people pump, this would allow us to potentially drop and go, that we could drop a pump off, let it do its thing and cover more properties that are flooding faster. It also then helps shield us from some of the risk and liability of loss for like, oh yeah, it broke. What are you going to do? So right. if you've if you've acknowledged that, like, yes, this is being relinquished to my care for the, the purposes of an emergency, uh, in, in failure of returning it, I may be charged the full amount of whatever. If it is returned broken, I may be charged a prorated amount up to the full amount based on replacement cost, you know, like that sort of thing, just so that we're covered from a legal sense. Right. We'd have to run that through the solicitor, of course. But right. And his, I, his idea runs about 300 to $350 per kit. And you know, I like this idea. We, we saw a lot of people, in, even in our own community, um, their power went out briefly or their sump pumps failed died, or whatever yeah. the case is. So I know mine was struggling. I'm happy right, it didn't die. Right. So 300, 350 per kit. You know, again, it's, it's, a, it's a discussion to have with the township, um, with us as to what, what kind of services do we want to be able to provide to our community? Again, it's this whole concept of outreach and making where we live better and functioning. So we're not burdening the fire department, et cetera. Are there things we could do more for our residents? All right. Um, this is really on his big wish list of things. He'd like to pursue ways to purchase a 14 to 16 foot enclosed trailer. And part of this is he wants to be able to pursue some grants to see what he could find because there's a whole bunch of stuff available through FEMA and Pima and other resources that he would need our DUNS number and he would need our SAM um, information. So it's numbers that are that this township has uh, that as the EMC, he would be able to fill up these forms and um, get equipment. So it he would like to have it so you could transport any uh, pumps, signs, cones, et cetera. And um, um, I don't know if anyone else popped up for the initial search and rescue for the gentleman that was missing from the American rescue uh, for the American house here. So he said during the search and rescue operation, a trailer was used as a command center that contained water and gear. This trailer would also be used as a location to place any evacuees during flooding or other emergencies while on scene, but not for transport. So he, he would pull up with his truck. He'd have this trailer available. You know, if someone's rescued, you have a, a, essentially a small enclosure where someone could safely sit in there and, and until other resources would be available. Um, it would be designated as a disaster support unit under EMA and used only for emergencies, special event support, or at the request of supervisors or mutual aid EMA agencies. And the nice thing is John's been, been reaching out to other agencies throughout the county and even into Lebanon County. So he found one local dealer and the costs are between uh, 12500 to 14000 plus a generator. So again, this is something he's not asking the township to outright purchase. This is something he wants to pursue funding for. Um, and we've had the other uh, item is we've had several searches this year. All were successful. This was really, really nice. On September 10th, multiple agencies were requested. Lebanon Unit 66 Marion Fire Company, Western Berks uh, Fire Department drone, and who successfully made the rescue. And we depend tremendously on our area mutual aid company. So again, at all of our meetings, we always say a big thank you to everyone. And I, I think this, this last rescue effort was, was really rather short. It was about two to two and a half hours versus the other one, which lasted several hours, which we're grateful for this gentleman was found. So um, the, other, the last thing is we will not have a dedicated emergency management agency vehicle because the cost is prohibited, uh, but other several emergency management coordinators made some suggestions to him. Um, he wanted to know if the township can legally use funds to purchase emergency lighting for use on a personal vehicle for use by the EMC for township emergencies. And I don't know if he means just like a dash light or something else for his personal vehicle. Yeah, that would. Yeah. The, the real question would be, are we talking like the, the volunteer firefighters have the thing that they stick on the top? I, or are I we talking so. about like front mounted lights for additional lighting during an emergency? I think Let's, it's just something he could temporarily uh, mount. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's I yeah. think the, 
and I don't know the exact rules for this off the top of my head, but I think that's the delineating factor on how permanent of an yeah, installation no, I don't it think is. It's, I don't think it's permanent um, at all. It'd be something that he would have to mount because he's been on scene for a couple of things, even with the high visibility clothing. So, mm -hmm. so, and I think what you could attest to that too. So yeah, pass that down to Sue for me. All right. So that's one part of what he wanted to talk about. You guys okay? Everyone's uh, okay. Let's, let's keep, keep it rolling. All right. The other thing he wanted to put forth for the supervisors is talking about a fire marshal position. Um, again, I don't know much detail, so I can't really speak on, on his behalf. That's stuff, you know, I'm familiar with because that's all he talks about at home. So, uh, number one, the fire marshal position would be is to maintain a liaison with the supervisors and the designated fire EMS and rescue agencies for Marion Township and serves as a liaison between supervisors, local, state, and federal emergency services departments. Again, this isn't something that most uh, townships have. Some townships do have it, but again, I think I could see the need for it because things are just keep on happening. And no matter what we wish for, it, well, I'd rather be prepared than unprepared. All, all things being equal, I think just by the nature of things, we're gonna have flooding right. regularly. Right. He would, uh, or he or she would be the person to maintain records of fire responses, emergency responses, and submit reports to supervisors on emergency activities in the township submitted by response agencies. So it would be a lot more feedback from both the fire department, I think police agencies, and maybe EMS, because we get these random reports, but if he's the liaison, he would be the person that they would contact, and we would be more up to date with stuff. Excuse me, I shouldn't say him. Whoever is the fire marshal position, forgive me. Um, they would monitor drought conditions to determine if water and or burning restrictions are warranted. Uh, reports to supervisors on any conditions or occurrences related to fire safety within the township and respond and assist the emergency services providers designated by the supervisors to operate in the township, operate as safety officer during emergency responses. So that in particular, I know he's talked about briefly. So I know he wants to create a... Uh, um, a civilian group where like, okay, let's say there's a hurricane again and there's flooding, you know, like this community would bring out certain people or whoever's interested in doing it, they would be activated and help to coordinate um, resources as needed for that particular event. And this is something that I don't think people require any special training. Basically it's volunteers. And I think that there's like, I think there's a pretty big program across the state, if not the country for things like this. So this is something I know he's very interested in because the more help and the more educated people are and they know what to do in these kind of scenarios, the better off we all are as a community. Um, perform community outreach within the township to educate on emergency preparedness, fire prevention education and 911 education. Investigate resources for funding of grants and support to the emergency service providers in the township. And the fire marshal, last but not least, would, uh, would serve at the pleasure of the supervisors. I don't have any objections there into creating a fire marshal role. My concern is reliably being able to fill that in the same sense we had problems with filling the EMC position in the past. Mm -hmm. All the things that you rattled off in terms of responsibilities, there's certainly a benefit to that and improved communication, improved tracking, increased data points around things. Uh, having somebody that is going to be really purpose driven on keeping up a, a constant and routine dialogue with mm -hmm. the fire company, the police, EMS mm -hmm. services, both locally and yep. immediately connected. Um, but of again, and left at it, this would, point. Yeah. it would just be making sure that yep. we're, we're going to be able to fill yep. that so that we don't create a position that it's going to be historically right. and chronically vacant. Right. Well, John um, wanted to yeah apply for that yeah, I, but of course it would be something that it's something we'd want to open we'd want to have yeah. open and interview candidates and things like yep. that it's speaking honestly there's a good synergy between fire marshal and emergency management yep. coordinator because of the the similarities between the two uh, but that doesn't necessarily inherently mean that it has to be yep. the same person um just as you were rattling stuff off there I, I made a note it might actually it might be a neat thing that'd be easy to do would be to ask the fire company to do like a fire safety day i remember like as a kid oh, yeah. at elementary schools yeah. they'd have yeah. uh, it open where you could see the trucks or they would do like an explanation about like yeah if you're in a house fire you need to make sure that you do this or you know some some educational thing that might be fun from a community standpoint it might right. be an easy enough ask for them um, whether it's at their fire company or at like the elementary schools like hey could you you know make the rounds to like east and west mm -hmm. or it might be a, a thing that again just nobody was considering that would be a, right. a, a good community outreach thing we need we um, need much better communication 
you know, us as supervisors and just within the community, it was nice to, to, I know I grew up in a, in a community where I knew my neighbors and I knew, you know, people come down the street and you'd wave hello. And I, I don't see that much anymore. Um, it'd be really nice to, to have that sense of, Hey, that's, you know, I know these guys are on my fire departments or, you know, to have a little bit more events, even if it's just things that are going to help our community be safer and, and more prepared for things. And I think that's, that's part of his goal too, just to, more communication, people knowing people and not afraid to say, I'm here to help you, you know, I'm your neighbor. And, you know, we went through this kind of a training and this is what's going on here. You know, I'm, I'm here to help. So yeah. I have nothing really much more to say, especially from a treasurer's standpoint, because I'm just tired. So okay. oh, Joe, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we don't have as West Park as we we have no such thing as a, a community crime watch. Now, I have noticed the crime on here is fairly low. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like, and it's usually mm -hmm. news and stuff right mm -hmm. now. Soaping windows and that kind of stuff. We all did as kids. Maybe I'm wrong, but no. this is what I perceive. But you know, I mean, if you're gonna do the fire, let's do the police. Mm -hmm. Let's get oh, yeah. 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 So the, the tool I can come drove up to our community the other day. Myself and my neighbor on the street, we stopped in and chatted for about a few minutes. Yep. Yep. They have a lot of good chat. Yeah. Anyway, so they're yeah. they're they're typically here at the Thursday night meetings, and I get a police yeah. report that covers some of the, the high level stuff. But okay. um, there are times that I reach out to them for things that I, I know we need to get information on. Yeah. But to, to Irene's yeah. point, there's always room for improvement. There's always better ways to communicate. So yeah. if we had somebody who was really purpose dedicated for that, you'd be able to get a lot more of that. Yeah. Uh, well, what you call gab, kind of more of that anecdotal information back and forth, better than you would for like okay, I'm, I've got. A half an hour with you once a month yeah um and john john does talk to to um the tulpy police all the time and you know he's worked during unfortunately during the emergencies he's he's worked with them pretty pretty closely yeah. he's he's actually opened up more communication lines between a lot of agencies in this area and again that that those two rescues that he was on went really mm -hmm. really well so i mean there's there's good foundation there and he just wants to broaden it and uh on the good track last night and he said they hire another police mm -hmm. yeah so so you will have more cars coming more through cars. yeah 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 you know, yeah. We did, you know. Mm -hmm. how many police are part of the tool it's three Three, four, four, four. four, they just oh, hired four, the fourth four. one. Yeah. But so Chris, Chris is going to retire. Yeah. yeah. So it'll probably be back down to three. But it's, yeah, it's typically three. They're at four right now, but probably once uh, up Chief Kirshner retires, we'll be back down to three again. But that's the that's the Topahawken Police Force is three gentlemen. Okay. Uh, Kelly. I just wanted to say, and when we did have a playground back here, we did have the Topahawken mm -hmm. Police back here giving a tour. The car shop with the children about safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, again, just like with the fire safety thing, that's something that I, I, I think I threw it out there at the one community association meeting like ages ago. Like there are some places that do like the touch a truck right. event. It'd be awesome to be able to get the fire oh department God, in, the police, great. the EMS, farmers for yeah. like, yeah, there's this ridiculously large farm all thing. Like be careful about climbing out around it, but you can touch the tires or you can see how ridiculously right. large it is. Having those sorts of events are good from a community standpoint, but they're also good from an outreach standpoint. So people are familiar with the police officers that provide police protection or the, your local fire company. It's things that just haven't been done historically and over the past two years have been difficult because of the whole COVID thing about like, you know, not getting people into large groups. But it's yeah. something that we we yeah. certainly have a, an opportunity, a relatively easy opportunity to improve on. Yeah. So are you guys okay if John starts looking for grants? Yeah, okay. I, I'm again, there's, there's no, other than time, yeah. there's really no wasted effort in looking at grants. Like as long as we're not financially committing to anything without ratification and discussion, he can look for grants. If he says okay. like, yeah, this is a $20,000 trailer and I've managed to get $18,000 worth of it in grants, are we okay with spending two grand on it? Mm -hmm. Then we'll discuss it and we'll go from there. The The price tag is a bit lofty right. to try to organically pay for, but right. 
if it's contingent on grants, then yeah, find out and let's let's have further discussion after that. Oh, that's exciting. And that's some uh, a new SUV. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, he, he did tell me too. Uh, they having a budget for for the police department three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't go far. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> we know we're we're a testament yeah. to the fact that that doesn't yeah. go as far as you'd think. Yeah. Um, Jim, do you have any comments? I sent both of you the uh, note the other day that those stones out. Of, what is that? They sent them. They sent them a letter. Stone? So I don't yeah. know if McCarthy sent They're the second. The right away. They they sent them a letter, uh, which I, I think you were if you weren't cc'd on it, I'll forward it to you. But they sent them a letter on the twenty second with a very very clearly marked like Google Maps photo of like here's the right of way. Here are your stones. They must be either moved or removed. Yeah. I know that's not going to be an easy task, but they really are. Oh, they are. They absolutely are. And it, it's a, uh, they're off the road enough that I, thankfully nobody has hit them, but they're in the right of way enough that if somebody did something stupid and was like speeding or God forbid they were drunk or something, they're close enough to the road that somebody could potentially kill themselves on them. Yeah. So big, big stones. Yeah. They, they need to be moved or removed. And this is what I had personally even told the guy when we were doing the signage at that intersection was like, I know, I know why. You put them there. I get it. They can't stay there. They need to move. Yeah. Like the signage, and like we haven't heard any follow ups from them. So the signage appears to be working. We've not gotten any follow up complaints, but they need to go. The signage will address the issue. If you still have concerns about people pit hitting your house, like then you need to move them in onto your property, but they can't stay. They can't stay where they're at. Um, and he was obviously resistant to that, but he kind of understood. On that, I, I didn't get like obviously I didn't get in like a fist fight or anything with the guy. He wasn't that combative, but um, he kind of understood that it's like yeah, they're they're not where they're supposed to be. So we just have to again, maybe yeah. potentially a third letter. But Some again, days. like with everything else, Some we may days. have to we may have to take action. Well, no, there was there was a deadline in the most recent one. Um, the first letter that was sent was basically just like we talked about this. Please move these. The second letter was a little stronger. The third letter is going to be very strong in this, if we have to get to the third letter of like, you need to move these. Otherwise, like we're either going to take you to court or we're going to move them and we're going to send you the bill. Yeah. Like much like with everything else, we can't jump to step three right away. We have to go kind of through the process. And I personally, even though it's time, I kind of like the, the polite process of giving people a chance because like everybody's got stuff going on and they're in fairness to the guy, they're enormous rocks. So it may be a situation where like he just hasn't had the time in his work schedule or he hasn't been able to rent a piece of equipment, whether it's uh, him reaching out and starting it or them having the equipment available. I don't know, but we want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but there does hit a point where you've exceeded that and we need to take action. I don't know so, how he got those there, but it wasn't an easy task. They're big rocks. They're big rocks. Uh, uh, at, at one point, uh, there were supposed to be some signs down in Fort Wayne that's the state road thing if there's any signs that are not there about like the wasn't wasn't the township or neighboring townships was to put those in what all yeah 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 so like i know all of all of ours are in but there was something that was supposed to be put on 422 like on the state road side of things about like don't turn right like upcoming don't turn right um yeah, I had kind of honestly lost sight of that, but all of our signage is in. And honestly speaking, if you're driving up that road, the worst thing that happens is you notice that sign and you have to take a slightly longer route to be able to get over. Not the end of the world, but ideally it would be better to give people more advanced notice. Yeah. So um, let me make a note of that. Okay. Sue, do you have any comments? Nothing. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone. It was a, a long, but I think productive and, and fruitful meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 12.08. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right, meeting adjourned. Fantastic. Thank you. Have a good week, everyone.